Uh, uh. I rank where the view is nothing less than phenomenal For how I express and project from my abdominal The only view better both my daddy and my mama know No living parents, my sons give me balance My wife is my serenity, this mic is my identity The world is foul enough, that's why I write without obscenities Provoking danger with broken languages, spoken anguish Begging to get hurt, why would you ask to go through changes? Yes lord, life's a chessboard, master the angles Control the tempo, be the one who holds the info Acknowledge, acknowledge is just as deadly as machete swings When spoken, the truth is as potent as that Medellin While others swear the style is free, I just let it ring Our time is undervalued, so just make us better kings My fans on my shoulder, reaching after better things Today I take the shot, for them I'd rather set the screen My mama told me follow my dreams My daddy told me get it by any means Stand tall, make a bow to a king But I've evolved, you can see the result Look in my eyes when you speak in the God Life and for those who we caught up in using what I was saw with the muse. I guess they call it proving I'm more than an artist. Pistoling out my darkest while sizzling out a harvest. And storing what gets me from A to B, just like garages. Instrumental with collages. Envision what I've been drawing. Broadway to give you rhythm like the great Lena Home. So bent on, found comfort in the storm. Find peace and norm when you see them others perform. Organized chaos, I'll cast it like hey, yeah. Yo, party people in the place to be. What's good? It's your man, Uncle Freezy. What's good? What's good? What's good? How y'all this morning? Man, I'm good. Man, it's been a busy morning. It's been a busy, busy morning. A busy morning, man. But I'm glad to be here with y'all. Looking forward to chopping it up with y'all this morning. So today I want to crank up. The season prediction show. Today I want to do the season prediction show. Can you put it right there? Thank you. So we want to do the season prediction show. Not predicting everything. Don't want to predict. Don't try to. Don't want to try to predict everything, man. Just, just, um, um, just some stuff, right? Hey, shout out to to Ron. Still, um, Knicks fans. What's good? The original DSJ Delano Steel Junior is in the building. South BK, what's good? Will Salkins in the building, what's good? Eli M, what's good? I see you, Eli M, what's good? Man Child's in the place to be, White Falcon, what's good? What's good, White Falcon? What's good? Pudge Nice is in the building. What's good? So, what I want to do is get started with the season predictions right where so i want to get started with the season predictions right i just want to get right to it it's a but it's a bunch of them and so i want to get right to them so let me see how many do i have one two three four five and i have one up here twice all right party people let's start with the season predictions So with that said, I would I, I'd like to start with a team prediction first. Right? I'd like to start with a team prediction first. And so I'm gonna go on wax. I'm gonna get on wax and do my seat, my my Knicks season record prediction, right? So you guys can have it. 
right? White Falcon says 50 wins without Ben Simmons, 64 with Ben Simmons. Wow. With no small forward, no defense, 50 wins. Wow. Okay. I, I see you. I see you. What about y'all? What, what do y'all predict for the Knicks? What, what, what's y'all season prediction? What's your win total? What do y'all, how many games do you think the Knicks are going to win? How many games do you think the Knicks are going to win? I have my, hey, I have my total already. Oh my goodness, my dog has been going crazy. My dog's girlfriend comes outside occasionally, like during the day, and my dog loses his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jay Boogie, I saw where you called me, man. I was away from the phone. All right. So I see 49 in the chat. I see 50. I see 50 in the chat. <laughs> Wolf Bim. <laughs> so I'll let y'all know how many um, that, that I predict the Knicks are going to win. Right. This is this is what, what I'm looking at right here. And then I'm, I'm going to I'm going to speak to it. So I'm predicting the Knicks to be 54 and 28, right? I'm predicting the, the, the Knicks to be 54 and 28. And the reason why I say 54 and 28 is because um, I think the Knicks are a lot better than, than what we anticipate. But I also don't think the Knicks as, as are as good as we'd like them to be, right? So, so I think that I think the fifty-four wins is. <clears throat> excuse me. It it sounds like a stretch, right? But it's not really, because I, I think this team plays hard and eats on the bottom feeders. And basically, basically, what I'm getting at is is us eating on the bottom feeders will get us a lot of Ws, right? And then we'll uh, not occasionally lock, knock off a good team, right? So even with the great teams in the NBA, there are only five, in my opinion, five great teams in, in the NBA right now. Two in the East, three in the West, right? Two in the East, three in the West. I think Denver is going to be one of them. Utah is going to be one of them. The Lakers is going to be one of them, right? And then in our conference, Milwaukee is one of them, and Brooklyn is the other. So even with that said, even with that said, if we split with those teams, that's still about six or seven losses. If they get the best of us, that's still only about 10 losses, right? So with 10 losses to the great teams, that means 18 losses to the rest of the league. And then when you say that, when I when I say it to you out loud, it sounds crazy, right? Well, when I when I say when I say, yeah, hey, White Falcon, no, nah, the, the no, nah, no, nah, the Warriors ain't no, nah, the Warriors ain't a great team. You ain't seen them play yet. You ain't seen the war. You ain't seen this war. This iteration of the the Warriors play a single game yet, right? They don't have anything to go by this. This Golden State team has no track record at all. Maybe they will be great, right? Maybe they will, right? Maybe they will be great, right? But we don't know that yet. Shoot, they don't know that yet. Matthew, Jamal, what's good? What's good? How y'all this morning? Right? Right. So I, I'm not throwing people on the radar, teams on the radar that ain't done like like Atlanta. We got to see them do it again. 
right? So Atlanta, we got to see him do it again. Philadelphia with all that drama, I'm not calling them great. Right? No. Nah. I want to be, if we are forced to be realistic about the Knicks, then we should be realistic about every other team too. Right? People tell me all the time, man, Uncle Freeze, you got to be realistic about the Knicks, man. Be realistic. Be realistic. And, and so I tell them, if I have to be realistic, if I have to be realistic about the Knicks, other teams have to be realistic about themselves as well, right? Can Steph Curry stay healthy? Can Paul George carry a team by himself? Have you seen Paul George carry a team by himself yet? Exactly, right? Can Philly get over the hump? They say they're great, but so far they've just been a second round exit. That's it for Philly. Philly is a second round exit. Tomu, what's good? But the Knicks are deep. Right? So, so the thing is, the thing is, I'm I'm getting at is is this. I don't want to give out kudos to anybody too early, and if I have to give out early kudos, I'd rather give it to the Knicks. Right? I mean, if I have to give out early, if I have to go give out kudos sight unseen, why not give those kudos to the Knicks? That, that that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. So I'm predicting the Knicks will be 54 and 28. In a worst case scenario, we lose 10 games to, to the great teams of the NBA. That means that gives us 18 L's to the rest of the league. That means the the Bostons, the Golden States, the um Atlantas, um whoever, the you know, the Clippers, that means we, we'll get 18 losses to the rest of the league. Right. <clears throat> so with that said, when you think about when you think about my logic and my strategy for coming up with this record, when you look at 54 and 28, you look at it as being conservative. World YL was good. What's good? Right. If you look at my strategy, the way I derived getting to a record. Right. I looked at can the Knicks knock off great teams in the NBA? Am I confident in that? No. But on any given night, the Knicks can beat anybody. Tom Thibodeau said it himself. Tib said, if you play good defense, rebound the ball and don't turn the ball over, you can compete with anybody in the NBA. Tom Thibodeau said that in a press conference. Tib said, if you play defense, rebound the ball, and don't turn it over, you can compete with any team in the NBA on a nightly basis. That's what Tom Thibodeau said. That's why I'm saying this New York Knicks team, this New York Knicks team, I predict them going 54 and 28. And of course, this is clean slate, like no major injury, um, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is like um, best case scenario, nothing bad happens. No Kemba injury, no Rose injury, none of that. Just, you know, guys going out there and balling. Guys going out there and hooping. Right? This is what just what I'm saying. Just just 54, 28, right? 54 and 28. Um, I don't know where that'll get us in the Eastern Conference. Um, maybe maybe third or four, probably third, fourth, something like that. Right. Um I don't know how good Milwaukee will be. Don't know how good Atlanta will be. Don't know how good Brooklyn will be. 
but I'm certain so one team out of the Eastern Conference is going to be a 60-win team. A 60-win team is going to emerge from somewhere, and it'll probably be Milwaukee because um I can't see a team consistently. I don't see them having three, four, five-game losing streaks. Right. All right. So I'm going to move on real quick. Right. I'm just going to move on real quick just so that we can keep the conversation fresh. And then that way we can encompass everything. Right. All right. So here is how this is the reason why I think the Knicks are going to be a 54 win team. This is the reason why I think the Knicks are going to be a 54 win team. Yeah, you saw it. I'm going to do it again. You saw it. You saw it. Breaking news. The Knicks are going to have the league's best defense. Right? I think the Knicks are going to have the league's best defense. Right? And, and not because... Not because we're gonna have three guys um locking down, you know, the NBA, you know, all the best players or whatever, but because as a unit, as a unit, I think we have what it takes to guard anybody in this league. Right? Right? I think we have the pieces. I think we have the pieces to have the best defense. <laughs> Subliminal 209 is in the building. What's good? So, so sub, so sub says show it again. You want me to show it again, bro? Okay, I got you. I got you, big dog. I got you. Hold on. That's right. I added the breaking news part to it because it's like it's part of a conversation that is actually going in the opposite direction. Right. It was actually going in the opposite direction. Like um, the Knicks might not be a top 10 defense is basically what, what the conversations seem like they were headed. Right. But I, I think the Knicks have I think Quentin Grimes. I, I think Quentin Grimes has impressed me to the point where I think I kind of like him. I think Quentin Grimes, I think I'm warming up to Quentin Grimes. And, and I think I'm warming up to him because he's active defensively. Very active. And I think that might contribute. I think that might get him on the floor more. I think that might get him on the floor more. And you add the, you can't really go by what the preseason set preseason look like because Mitch only played 27 minutes in the preseason and there was a well played zero. And so we'll have an element of rim protection Right. I think this is the uh, uh, Danny Melinda says the guy you compared to Dotson. Right. Yeah. OK. I got you. I got you. I don't know. Danny Melinda's. What do you have against Damian Dotson, bro? What is that? What, what do y'all have against Damian Dotson? Yeah. Yeah. Act like Damian Dotson stole checks here or something. <laughs> yeah, y'all act, act like Damian Dotson pushed the old lady pushed the old lady down or something, bro. Damian Dotson was a good player here. <laughs> Yo, chat, what's the deal with why, why do we hate Damian Dotson so much all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, hey, <laughs> hey, Danny, I got you, bro. That was funny. Hey, <laughs> hey, Danny, I got you. I got you, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, yeah that's that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no oh, man. Um, um. Any anyway, what I, what I'm getting at is, I, I think, I think we have the flexibility to do to do multiple things defensively, and I think Tibbs find that out. I think Tibbs found that out Saturday when he when he played Grimes, um, extended time. I don't know if Grimes will get extended time during the regular season like that i don't know i don't know if let's put it this way none of us know none of us not not quentin grimes not Thibodeau, not us knicks fans you know what i'm saying not like not this you know the the beat report none of us know what what quentin grimes has in him yet because he hadn't played an nba game yet but but if you go by that last preseason game then then there's something there. And 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 I think Tibbs can probably bring that out of him. Right. And so with me predicting the Knicks will have the league's number one defense is, is not one of those things. I think it's going to be a rocky road to number one. Right. So I think it's going to be a rocky road to number one. I don't think we're just going to come just at tip off just whole teams to 80 you know what i'm saying or 90 or 100 i think it's one of those where we're going to have our ups and downs but once we find a formula we're going to lock in on it and then and this just smother teams with it right because last year last season i keep i keep wanting to say last year but last season our, our defense a savage nyc what's good um, last season, our defense wasn't one that um, um, I want to phrase it the right way. Our defense wasn't one that um, basically what happened is teams wore us down offensively. Our defense was pretty good, but when we got on the other end and couldn't score, it was just it was just too much to ask of your defense to constantly hold people to misses and then rebound and keep the score low. It was just too much to ask. The defense was pretty good, but if you can't at least score and take some of the pressure off defense, off your defensive units, then you know it leads you to a situation where even the best defenses, when when they get worn down, will start to give up points. It's it's the same in every sport. It's baseball, basketball, football. You can have the best defenders, and you know eventually they'll get worn down. Like, like in baseball, you'll kill your bullpen if every time you come out you're in a two to one game, two to one in the sixth inning. You'll absolutely wreck your bullpen. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to do matchups and all this stuff every night, wearing down arms. It's the same thing in football. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a seven, seven game going into the fourth quarter. Everything is, is the, the ultimate possession. You know what I'm saying? You can't give up a score because your offense can't score. So, so that I felt like that's what was going on last year. So I think this year, I think this year will be a lot better defensively because everything won't be the ultimate when it comes to a possession. If that makes any sense. Right. Hey, Dominic, you're right. Same thing in hockey, bro. Same thing in hockey. The same thing in hockey, bro. I mean, it's it's the same thing in hockey. I it's the same thing. So, but um, so I'm predicting the Knicks to be 54 and 28 due to an elite level defense and an offense that'll be improved, right? An improved offense. So what else do what other what other prediction that we had? Oh, okay, I got one. So you got bam. We got one, two.
Okay. Let, let's do the one that you've been waiting on. Julius Randle. Let's do the Julius Randle predictions, y'all. Yeah, y'all saw it. I'm predicting Julius Randle to be an all-star again this season. I'm predicting Julius Randle to be all-NBA again this season. I'm also predicting Julius Randle to get MP MVP votes. Um, I'm not saying how many, right? I'm just saying that I think he will. Because if he puts on performances like he did the other night against the Wizards, he won't have any other choice but to be in the MVP conversation. Now, yeah, yeah. So, um, I just read a bad. I just read a bad news text. So, so anyway, anyway. I think J.D. Randall will be 27 points, 11 rebounds, and five and a half, five assists, five and a half assists. And the reason being is because the floor will be so spread, the ball will be moved around so much that Julius Randall won't be able to be double teamed, triple teamed by, by teams. And 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 they won't be able to, to um, show exotic defenses against Julius. So you'll see less of J.D. Randall holding the ball. And more of Julius Randle taking your power forward off the dribble to the rat and scoring. Right? Julius Randle, no power forward in the league can guard Julius Randle outside of Giannis. No power forward, period. Out, out, outside of Giannis. Giannis is, is the only power forward I see in this league. And and I don't even I don't think Giannis can guard him for forty eight minutes. I just think he can guard him, and and high leverage possessions, like one possession at a time. You know what I'm saying? So what do y'all think? Yeah, infamous new king Randall. Randall's a monster, bro. Randall Randall is a monster, bro. So what do y'all think about Julius Randle? Yeah, can y'all see Julius Randle being an all-star again this year? What about Julius Randle getting MVP vote? I think so. I think so. All right, so I'm going to move on to, oh, wait a minute. There was a comment I saw. Yeah, okay. I want to see Randall defend the perimeter like he does when the game is on the line during the fall quarter. His trap defense was impressive. Yeah, yeah, and that, but that takes a lot of energy, though, bro. That takes a lot of energy. DSJ says, based on the way he played in the preseason, I think Randall averages 23 points. I agree with the rebounds and assists. Yeah, I think Randall is 20. I was thinking 29, actually, and then I had to reel myself in like, nah, bro. Nah, bro. You nah. Twenty nine might be too much. You know what I'm saying? Twenty seven sounds about right. <coughs> Twenty seven sounds about right. Right. And so here's the one. Here's the one I've been itching to get to. Right. Here's the one because I put a lot of work into this one. Put a put a lot of research into it and a lot of craft work into it. All right, one more time for Uncle Freezy. Uncle Freezy like looking at this one. All right. <laughs> P 
Punch Nice is saying get rid of Fournier already. Wow. 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 Okay. Hey, so so still Knicks fan says, I agree with you on everything except I think Randall will be around 25, 26 points a game. Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean, White Falcon? So Manchild says, Scout say Randall will continue off where he let where he left off last year. Okay. Okay. So White Falcon says RJ turnover too much. Yeah, I, I agree with you, especially in the in the preseason, right? But here is what if it's New King, I was just about to get to that. Right. I was just about to get to that. So here is why. So so here is why I'm predicting RJ Barrett to have three triple doubles this season, right? This this is why. So for one, the switch to the three means RJ Barrett may be closer to the rim for boards. Now, does that mean he's going to average 10 rebounds a game? No. It's not what I'm saying, right? It's not what I'm saying. What, I, what I'm saying is, is RJ playing the three means he'll be in range to grab more rebounds, right? Has that manifested in the preseason? No. No. I have this weird mic stand, but whatever. So no, so that doesn't manifest into didn't manifest during the the preseason, but during the regular season, I think you'll see R.J. Barrett, R.J. Barrett's rebound totals creep up somewhere around six or seven a game. That's a lot for a small forward. Seven rebounds a game is a lot for a three, in my opinion. But but I think there will be games where he will be board dominant. And there will be games where um the passes he th he he throws to Taj. If you saw those, if you remember those in the preseason, if you remember those in the preseason, then then you know that, that RJ knows how to find guys, and it's up to guys to convert once they catch the pass. Taj Gibson ate off that in one of those. I think Taj might have had like 18 or 19 points in the game. And RJ set him up nicely four or five times or three or four times. Right. So I'm saying to you, Knicks fan, if, if RJ Barrett has three triple doubles this year, RJ Barrett will be an all star candidate. I won't say he's going to, I'm not saying he's going to make the all star team. Because there are a lot of RJ haters. They they hate RJ Barrett just because. Right? Just because. And like <coughs> a guy I worked with said, I, I asked him, he, you know, he said, Man, RJ Barrett is is a bum. And when I asked, I was like, I was like, okay, man. So you just saying RJ Barrett is a bum. Let me hear your explanation why RJ Barrett is a bum. So he said he can't shoot off the dribble. He's not an athlete and he's slow going to the basket. Right? So he said RJ Barrett can't shoot off the dribble. He's not an athlete and he's slow going to the basket. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. I heard I heard a lot of that before. Right? I heard a lot of that before, right? People say all these things about RJ Barrett like they knock they knock his weaknesses. Right? They knock his weaknesses hard, right? But here's the thing. People never speak to the things that he's great at. Right? So Bradley Beal got locked down by R.J. Barrett this preseason. Locked down. 
So much so that Bradley Beal was looking to get away from R.J. Barrett, right? And nobody even brought that up. That Bradley Beal, in, in, in the first game, Bradley Beal was visibly frustrated, shuffling his feet like George Jefferson because R.J. Barrett was locking him down. Right? And, and people like... Um, some dude named Ghetto Intellect won't even acknowledge RJ Barrett's great defense just because he's not six foot nine. Right? Won't even acknowledge the fact that a dude that scored 30 points a game got locked down. Got locked down by RJ Barrett. He averaged 30 points a game last year. 30-something points a game. R.J. Barrett put him in, in lockdown. Here's the other thing they don't acknowledge about R.J. Barrett. Because they always bring out the bad stuff about R.J. Barrett. Man, he's too slow going to the basket. He's not athletic enough. He can't shoot off the dribble. Hey, man, okay, so he can't shoot off the dribble? What about with his feet set? Is he a good shooter? From three with his feet set? I, I, I'm asking somebody in the chat. I'm asking the chat. Chat, how do y'all feel about R.J. Barrett's three-point shooting? Chat, how do y'all feel about R.J. Barrett's three-point shooting? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I need y'all to participate. Uh, and some, some guy named... Uh, Ghetto Intellect says, Blorn's tears, here's the problem. Bill is a two. I trust RJs with twos. It's the threes I will need to see him play against. Okay. Okay, that's that was okay. That's a smart assessment. I dig it. I dig it. Chat, how do y'all feel about RJ Barrett's three-point shooting? If RJ Barrett's feet are set, if his feet are set. How do you feel about R.J. Barrett? Stafford Don is in the building. Stafford Don, what's good? A lot of wise says, at this point, I think they all going in almost, right? DSJ says, um, DSJ says, R.J.'s three-point shooting is improved. And right. Jose Perez says RJ is 220 now. That's why people um, cannot take him in, in, in the paint. Only Kawhi can dominate him. Right. What I'm telling you is, what I'm telling you is we're so quick. People are quick to point out the flaws in Randall's game, the flaws in RJ's game, but won't even consider having a fair discussion about their overall game. The guy I talked to, he didn't want to hear it. He was like, don't talk to me about numbers. I know basketball. I know what I'm looking at, Uncle Freezy. Don't talk. When I was when I tried to tell him about, well, you know, at his age, he is better at his age than Bradley Beal and Devin, Devin Booker and Zach Levine. You know that, right? At his age, at RJ's age, through his first two seasons, at his age 19 and his age 20 seasons, RJ Barrett is better than not Bradley, not not Devin Booker. I'm sorry, uh, better than Bradley Beal and Zach Levine. And when I say that, they're like, "No, I don't. I don't care to hear about numbers, Uncle Freezy. Uncle Freezy, don't bombard me with facts. I want to bombard you with lore." I'm like, oh, and 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 we're supposed to be uh, mysticized, like you know, we're supposed to be like, oh my gosh, the lore. You know basketball. You watch basketball for fifty years. Oh my goodness, you've seen it all, nah, bro. When it comes to legit comparisons, if you're going to criticize an NBA player, right? If you're going to criticize, if you're going to critique a player, nowadays we have things called analytics. Right, we have things called analytics where you can't just say 
You can't just throw one thing out and think that you can preach to the choir with it. Things don't work like that anymore. Right? Things don't work like that anymore. You can't say, well, RJ Barrett is not a not a good shooter when the numbers say that he is an improved shooter. His first season was a throwaway season because he had a doofus coach who tried to tinker with his shot. Anybody in this chat, is, is there anybody in this chat willing to say David Fisdale was a great coach? Just raise your hand. Just put a thumbs up in, in the chat if you think David Fisdale was a great coach. I'll screenshot it and save it. If you think David Fisdale was a great coach, then put a thumbs up in the chat. I'll screenshot it right now. Right? If you think, if you think David Fisdale was a great coach, raise your hand. That's all I'm saying. That, 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 that's all I'm getting at. Uh, what I'm getting at is this. We can't say that Julius Randle can't do such and such or R.J. Barrett is bad at such and such, right? And then ignore the other parts of the body of work, right? We can't say that. We can't say that. So, so what I'm getting what I'm getting at is this. I, I believe Julius Randle's scoring average will increase. The reason why I think so is because the defenses that he faced that he faced last year, he won't face them. Hey, yo, Anuti twenty five, what's good? David Parker is in the building. What's good, man? Child, I see you. I see you, man, child. My bad. My bad. And, and so Soulfinger says, and, uh, and my bad, man. I keep forgetting about this. Let me let me do this right here. I keep I keep forgetting to do. I, I'm sorry, y'all. It's hey man, I don't hey, I don't mean it. I don't mean to do that in the I, I'm I'm sincere when I say I don't I don't mean to just um, just start, just start talking, man, and and not invite others into the chat, man. It's been a crazy morning. I had like nine telephone calls, man. Colin Powell died this morning. I'm I'm up doing slides, right? I'm up doing doing presentations. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm up here trying to impress st um still Knicks fans. I'm like, yo, I hope still Knicks fans like this. I'm like, I, I hope still Knicks fans like it, man. You know, I, I put a lot of work into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, still Knicks fans, that dude, man, I just hope he look at this and like it. So a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anuti25 says, Fizdale equals a uh, rich co type. <laughs> <coughs> so, so got a lot of stuff going on this morning, man. So, so just bear with me. Um, oh, there he is. Good morning, sir. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Is this, is this, is this, um, color on color? Is this color on color here we got? Is this? I can't. I couldn't tell. Hey, Johnny Davis says, "Oh, I didn't know." But hey, man, yeah, man, just found out. They kind of, it kind of caught me off guard. Kind of, kind of uh, caught me off guard. But, but just a lot of stuff going on, man. Um, arguing all night with a guy 
that knows NBA basketball and says R.J. Barrett won't be a good defender because he's not athletic and he's slow. And so I was like, but but he makes up for it by being strong. And he was like, R.J. Barrett only looks strong. He's not strong. So now I feel like I'm dealing with haters. Bim, bim. There and there it is. Bim. Top, what top of the morning? Hey man. Uh, so so I, I wanted to say something to you. I tried to get it in the other day, and I wound up getting cut off. I think the thing you said about about um um your your, your place of employment um having a historic event. I meant to tell you how dope that was. I mean that's that has been on my mind ever since. That has been on my mind ever since, man. We party from Thursday to Sunday. I am, I am out of it. But, um, <laughs> but you know we're transparent. So, um, first of all, everybody knows who I am. I'm GI. Most importantly, the Knicks freestyle, man. We are in season, and we are really vying. You, 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 you have to understand how competitive it is behind the scenes, and we have the crazy magician over here, one way or the other. You, you got a point. Man. Um, and he really challenges us, man. This network is something serious. I need you guys to understand that. Um, but we have uh, logistical issues that we've yet to address. Um, Wednesday, obviously, is the first game, so we won't be able to fill our slot now two weeks in a row. So I'm just wondering if we're going to at some point just pick a solid alternative slot because, you know, there's some people who, who really like to hear free key for GI, and I don't want them to be – Look, I, want them, I want them to know where to find us, even if it's a game on Wednesday. So I'm hoping we can lock in an alternative backup slot um, that allows us to continue to be great. Yeah, I, yeah, we definitely have to do. We definitely have to give the people what they want. Um, there are a number of options that we could do. We could we could pre-record and edit. And then, you know, or or we can we can jump on somebody else's joint and just do a takeover or or we can we can look at or we can look at the schedule, um, look at the schedule and then pick pick a day and then and then schedule it, you know, say a few weeks in advance. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll figure it out. We'll let for you and free key free key, I'm sure. But first of all. Let me salute this king that just walked in the building. Saturday, Saturday night was epic. I, I mean, uh, KJ, KJW Events called me the next day. He was just like, wow, I can see how this is intoxicating. He says, I, I, you know, I said, so so KJ, so Staffer, Cully, whoever's running Knicks at night, every Saturday you can expect me. Oh, I ain't going nowhere now. I only <laughs> just pulled up. <laughs> Hey, hey, gee, I'm just saying now. Now we we trendy dominant now. We trendy dominant now. That, oh, that's all I'm saying. Both of them trendy. Yeah, we oh, all trendy. They were, what they, up, staff? They need. Oh, he left. Staff. Yeah, left. They, he probably got booted. He'll be back. So, so we saying we get Aki and Sawfish this morning. That's what we get. We get Aki and Sawfish. Yo, yo, wait, 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 wait. I never <laughs> tasted Aki and saltfish in my life. That's a Jamaican thing, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a Jamaican. Okay, okay, okay. It is. So, uh, Nick G, how's the baby sleeping? A little better baby's now? Baby's doing good, man. Baby's doing good. Getting to put some cereal in there now, right? Ah, little... uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, G, I, you know, I got another little one on the way, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just about to say, he got, uh, hey, G, I, he got, he trying to do a backcourt. He got, a, he already got the point guard. He just need number two guard now. So he got... <laughs> hey, I, 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 and, and when Nick G told me that, Hey, did, hey, GI, what I heard, guess what I saw? Blessed tell, morning. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, All hey, right, Steph, hey, Steph, what's up, man? Don is in the building. What's good, bro? How you doing? Dad, he let mommy get no break. He put her right back. Yeah, I was like, I was about to tell, I was about to tell, G, hey, GI, I was about to say, God damn it, boy, I'm about to buy y'all ass a TV <laughs> so y'all have something to damn do at night. So, so y'all can watch some TV because clearly ain't no TV in the bedroom, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, congratulations, Poppy. Congratulations. Appreciate it. I'm about to get kicked out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. 
my bad. My bad, bro. My bad. My bad. Salute to the wise. Salute to the family. Oh, man. Staff keeps getting kicked out. Oh, my goodness. So um, I just want to say that I'm absolutely – you always try to get people riled up. You and another guy I know that does these podcasts, they try to get people riled up about RJ early. In fact, it's three of y'all. I mean, just relax. He's playing three this year. He's going gonna, he's gonna to play some bigger wings. Can we see it happen before you start pushing it down our throat? Like Bradley Bill's a two. I trust that RJ can bully smaller guys. He's, he's, he's proven it. Now he's going to be on the other end, though. He's playing a little bigger guy. So I want to see that. But I have no beef with RJ's effort and energy. His three-point shot has come a long, long way to almost a lead. I'm ready to almost call him a lead, three-point shooter. I need him finishing around the rim for you. You or nobody can distract me from that. Okay. okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. The one thing is, is if he doesn't finish around the rim – then that makes him basically on the level of Mikael Bridges, right? Much. And I'm not saying that Mikael Bridges is particularly bad or good at the rim, but I'm just saying, like, we start talking about contracts and stuff like that in a minute. I think um, somebody, I think it's Guillermo who just posed a question recently. Right. Um, so it has to be discussed. Just like Kevin Knox, just like Frank. When when I brought up Frank, I was like, he's not worth ten mil. That's that's what his cap hole was. Yeah. And when you start comparing players who could get you, you know, at ten mil, Frank might leave. I said that last year. Right. The cap hole for Kevin Knox is ten mil. He doesn't produce ten million dollars of of production. Right now, he doesn't even produce five million dollars worth right. of production. Right. He actually makes seven though, so we, we so we not getting our, our money's worth. He makes seven this season. Okay. 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 All right. All right. But yeah, but but we're talking about going forward though. After this yeah, yeah, season, yeah. yeah. After this season, I think he yeah. Our future media is is, is saying he's out of here. I think so too. But you know what? Let me make an argument for Kevin Knox right quick. So far, he's the only player of that archetype on the team. Big wing that can shoot. The only problem is, is that those big wings on, on a regular, they need to give you defense or they need to give you rebounding. So you can look at the auto porters the, and other guys that are like of that size. like They rebound or they defend well. Right. He doesn't give you the, the that third factor, you know? Right. 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 No, no blessed doubt. morning. Blessed morning. Can the panel hear me? Yeah. We hear you, man. We hear you. Yeah. I'm going to let you Bless up, G.I. Yeah, bless Nick up. G.I., I see you. What's up, man? Uncle Freezy. Sir, how you doing? What's good? What's good? I just say, let me just pop on for a quick minute. You know, I'm at the job. You know, okay. um, salute to y'all good brothers. Uh, salute to the chat. Um, you know, the season starts on Wednesday, man. I can't wait. I can't hey. wait. I can't wait. Hey, so so I want to get to that. But the first question I want to ask you is, so how did it feel to be in the captain's chair Saturday night? Ah, oh, man, it was it was totally a different experience, man. Um Respect to all the love, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't know it would probably would have went that well. You know, um, I respect GI giving me that props, that greediness, you know, and I'm going to bring it. You know, I, I'm going to bring it every every time Freezy calls me, I'm going to bring it. Just just know that. And I'm going to challenge some of my, my, chat fan, my chat people. You know, um, as I always say, we may have a... Uh, our choice in opin different opinions, but we all want the same thing, which is a championship. Right. You know, but um, I, I love it, man. You know, let let's get it. Bronze tears for life. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, so so here's the other question I want to ask you about. Hey, did you notice that time flies when you start? Remember, you and I talked about about doing it for an hour, right? I right. Said, let's do it. Let's do it for an hour. 
Let's get, you know what I'm saying? Let's get, get, get our feet wet. <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, regardless of what, we're going to cut it off at an hour. Right? Remember that? Right. And, <laughs> and then right at 55 minutes, I'm like, dang, we rocking, bro. What's happening? So, so yeah, well, you know, after that hour, we stayed on for about three extra hours and it was about mm. four hours. Yes. Yes. So, you know, the conversation was, 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 out of this world, we was just having a good time, you know, us Nick fans, you know, brilliant minds all together, you know, in one good pot. You know what I'm saying, Nick G, that good Palau. I heard of somebody talking about Aki and Saltfish. That's bro. not Trinidadian, bro. Okay, G.I., that is not <laughs> Trini, bro. All right. <laughs> you you got to okay. just have mercy <laughs> on them, man. They don't know. If you if you want a Trinidadian dish, you got to get some bacon shot. Yeah, and you no. never heard oh of that. Oh my god, that beacon but shark, beacon bro. shark, beacon bro. sawfish. You bro. understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I real thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> more fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's still Jamaican, though, but we take it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, okay, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, so the reason why I, I brought that up in this conversation, man, is because. I think, you know, I, I speak to I speak to um, those in the chat. And and so there is a legit template on how to do this thing. But we don't go by we don't go by that template. That's true. Right. So so there's a template. You know, the, the template is like one guy has his own channel and he'll invite others to come up and then they'll come up and hang out. And, you know, people will talk, whatever. See, we don't go see, here. It's kind of different in a way. It's like, you don't, it's kind of like, you know, you ask like, who's the boss? You know what I'm saying? It's like, like who, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and with that said, it's, it's like here, it's more like a family thing with Stephadon, you know what I'm saying? Took over the captain's chair. I sat way down in the corner, you know what I'm saying? To be like the counterbalance. And then we just rock and roll, bro. It's like for new viewers and listeners, they jump on and, and see us, you know what I'm saying? All they hear. Is the conversation, you know? what I'm saying they don't. It, it had nothing to do with the pecking order or none of these different things. All they all they did was tune in to a delightful conversation about the Knicks that was in depth and at times intense, but in it sometimes funny. You know what I'm saying? So so for it real, is what, for real. Yeah. So so you, you know, I mean, I I enjoyed it, man. As as a fan of the Knicks, I enjoyed the job that you did. I appreciate the love, Freezy. But get, fellas, I gotta go. I'm at this warehouse. It work calls, so I'll be listening. Hey, All right, y'all gotta stay bro. up. Be good, Knicks for life. For sure. You already know. Bless. Yo, All right, man. Stay safe out there, bro. Stay safe as always. Nick, so Nick G, What's how that, in the world does Wayne Selden make this roster? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think he outplayed like a mayor or I don't know. I don't know. I gotta look at the whole roster again, but um I don't know. You remember last year we had the same thing when Theo Pinson made it, remember? Mm-hmm. Hey, yo, I I will defend Theo to the death. Like that's my dude. Right. I, right. I'll defend that dude. But at the same time, like I didn't see anything from him in, in summer league. No. Yeah. I, I saw more from Amir, but <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, but then again, too, they signed a bunch of people and cut them the same day. The you same know, and that's day. formalities, you know, at least do dude, dudes got their bag or whatever. And then some people are at least in um G League. In, in the G League. So that, yeah. that makes a difference, but I don't I don't think he should be on the team per se. Yeah, I, I just don't see my I was holding out hope that MJ Walker would mm. make the team. Mm. But I don't know what we I hadn't heard anything since he got cut. No G League assignment, nobody else picking him up. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And the same thing for Amir Sims. And mm. and if you remember, Amir Sims actually showed us something. In that Detroit preseason game. Definitely. 
right? But then, but then you keep him. I mean, you cut him, and you keep Wayne Selden, who you brought in the day before rosters are supposed to be set. You, what's up? What's good? What's good? What's good? See, Freezy, I'm, I'm coming in hot this morning. I'm telling you right now. Oh man, I'm coming in hot. Listen. I go away for just a little bit, and people on this channel start to lose their ever love me. But I'm telling you right now, G Man for Life is back in the building, baby. I'm yeah. back in the building. Can, can I ask a question, right quick, G Man? Yes, sir. How are you, Giants doing, bro? So, so Nick G, are you a proud G Man right now? <laughs> first of all, first of all. See, that, that, that's an easy shot. I, I would expect more, more from you than that. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. I mean, I give you a layup, the first one. I would expect you to go to the other station. You know, I always said, and I'm on record now. Go back and watch the tape. I'm on record to say that the Giants would not be good until we get rid of Gellman. Last time I checked, Gellman is still in the front office. Is he not? Okay. Is he not? <clears throat> okay. Okay, I, I'm just saying. I, I'm on, I'm on record saying that. So you know, I, I, for for all all the Giants haters out there, you know, I salute you. This, this is this is this, as as Nick G said. This is a layup. You go ahead and take five shots all day. But guess what? I'm not here to talk about my beloved New York Giants today. I'm here to talk about my beloved New York. Nick no, I'm not. Right. I mean. Look, I'm I'm a healthcare worker, bro. I always look out for people's health. You know what I mean? So, oh, look, I, I, you know. I, I'm physically and mentally strong. Just know <laughs> that. Know that. Okay. <laughs> hey, so, so I got a, I, I, um, we got a, a, a channel called Huddle Up that, um, me and Anthony D, Anthony D, and myself are gonna do some old school Jets, mm -hmm. and, and and I'm oh, looking man. for, and I'm looking for some people to do some old school Giants. You know what I'm saying? So so eventually we want to do some old school G Man. I know G Man's coming. I knew it. I do it. So eventually we want to do some old school giants over there too. Um, um, but yeah, man. So I'm I'm in a, a weird situation, G Man. I, I can't figure out how Wayne Selden made this roster. Politics. That's all I, it is. It's got to be. It's got is it to politics? Be, it's politics. So 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 tell me the last time you saw Wayne Selden on the basketball court. In a, in a meaningful game. Let, let me know when, when was that time. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Go ahead, Google it. I'll wait. Nah, bro, don't wait. And don't hold your breath either. Maybe, oh, is it college? I'm going to wait. But yeah, college, college? college was the was last time you, you, you actually saw Wayne Selden in a meaningful basketball game. So right. wasn't, he the dude, wasn't he the dude Derrick Rose hit the shot over in college? <laughs> So, so let me let me let me explain something. The fact that we even discussing this gentleman's name on this network this morning is an atrocity. We should be talking about better things right now because he is not even a fact at this point in time. Not even on this. This is somebody in the front office saying, "Okay, well, let's do." If this smoke mirrors, baby, if, if you don't, you if you have not figured it out just yet, the Knicks have their eye on a person for that 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 fifteen roster spot. So we sign people and trade them every day. The same day as you guys, yeah. As you just mentioned, sign and trade every day. So that that right there, miss me with all that, man. Miss me. Look, I want to get down. I'm telling you right now, the only people I have confidence in is going to be on this roster on Wednesday before we play the Celtics is that ten man rotation. Everybody else, I agree. I agree. It, it, there is a, a a point where you could actually sit here and say, you know what, they ain't gonna play a minute, or they they just gonna be dancing, just like the new the new Theo Penson. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. That's it. That's it. I'm telling you. But 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 G man, if if that's the case, though, G man, if that's the case, if the case is is set around the fifteenth man bench warmer cheerleader slash whatever. Why not have it be a rookie that may turn into something down the road? So, so to that point, Freezy, I would okay. say, I would say this: there are at least two rookies on the squad. I think have solidified their future. That being one, Mr. Grimes, and one, Mr. McBride. Those two right there. Now, we were enamored with 
Sam, uh, when he was forced to play, when Mitchell and Noel were both out, so everybody was elevated on, on the Sims aspect. Right. Okay. I, I wasn't, think. though. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, it, it is what it is. But I'm going to tell you what, what, what reality set in for me was when I saw Tibbs go with the small ball lineup, and he had Obi playing at the five or Randall on the court at the same time. Oh, everything revolved around Obi Toppin. Okay. Yeah. Right, I you know, I always, I'm always going to bring this back. But from a basketball standpoint, if you're a head coach, you are you more comfortable with on the floor? Someone who has been on the roster for a year, this is his second year, his sophomore year, or a freshman coming straight out of college. Well, a, a, a rookie coming straight out of college. That still got to get his game. If you're forced in that position. Because I, I always said this, right? If we are, are looking for and now, and when I say this, Knicks fans, boy, they're about to lose their mind. I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. You know why? Because I got thick skin freezing. And I told you when I came on, I'm coming in hot this morning. Right? I'm going to tell you right now, I love me some Todd Gibson. I love him. I love him. I love him. He so is Todd Gibson. He, oh, Todd. Okay. Todd, Todd is the man. He is the man, right? But I'm telling you right now, if we are saddled with Todd Gibson playing the five, starting for the season, we in trouble. I'm telling you right now, we are in trouble. Oh, and man. Let's keep it 100. I'm going to keep it I, See, this is what happens when I come in hot. First of all, I apologize to my fans early in the morning, right? Because I'm sorry I've been away, but, you know, that, that thing that- You got fans? See, here we go. I'm going to give you in a minute, young man. I'm going to give you in a minute. Hold, hold, hold your peace. I'm going to give you in a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming for you in a minute. <laughs> so, 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 G-Man, he, G -G -Man, he said he wanted to do a show on, on the channel Thursdays at 630. So, okay. or, or, some, or something like that. So, so I'm paraphrasing. I was, was going to get to that in a minute. Now, I'm, 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 again, I'm going to apologize because my own show, did I co-host with my man Cornerstone Kev? You know, I was not available uh, to partake, and I understand there were a myriad of personalities that uh, partook in my time slot, which is okay. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? I understand when when, when you got something that's on and popping like that, everybody wants to be a part. You know what I'm saying? When you go back and you think about the freezing that slogan that used to be popping up back in the day, when they say. Everybody want to be like Mike? I understand. I get it. Right. I get it. But this, this, this is what I would tell you. I would tell everyone that came through, thank you for coming out. Thank you for the support. Because we all family at the end of the day. But like family, we struggle like, with that sibling rivalry. That's right. what we do. You know what? You, nobody else can say nothing bad about ghetto intellect but g -Man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and get on internet and talk bad about Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? That's how we get down. That Because we can. We Nobody else better it. not talk bad about G-Man. I'm telling you right now. By the way, we know, you, we know you're hot. You're a Giants fan. So we knew you was coming in hot. Early in the morning. <laughs> Here we go. But, Freezy, I'm telling you right now. That 630 spot, baby, that thing is what we call solidified. It's solidified. Ain't right. nobody coming up in here but my man Cornerstone Kev, aka Shazam, aka Star Child. That man got more name. I'm, I'm gonna get into things. He, he's an unregistered alien or something because he got more names than, than the law a lot. I got one. I am I am your man. Star he, step, he stepped oh. up in your absence though. He ran an excellent show. I rewatched re the show. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a good time. And I'm glad you guys have a good time. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you right now, Sergeant Nix, a.k.a. G-Man for Life, is back in the building. Okay. So, 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 so I don't know if you know, this Thursday, this week we have an issue again, our time slot. By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to check the schedule because in, in preseason I said, freeze, Wednesday. I just remember the Knicks having a lot of Wednesday games. They do. They do. And so now I know why y'all took the Thursday slot because I started thinking, <laughs> Oh, Thursday for the NBA is the prime time TNT spots. There, you there go. won't be a lot of Knicks games on Thursday. That's right. Hmm. Okay, so we're yeah. sucking on that slot. That's okay. It's okay. Great content can be found. Okay. Great content can be found. 
slot. So we'll, we'll deal with the time slot. But if you, since you missed Thursday, last Thursday, we can, you know, Freezy will allow yeah. with a freaky. We can come back because we have no time slot this Wednesday uh, due to the opening season game. We obviously not compete against the Knicks ever. Everybody's competition but the product on the floor. Okay. Um, so if you'll have us again, think about it. We would love to come back. So so what I would do, I, I would take the under advisement. I got to talk to my co-host. You know what I'm saying? So, again, I, I would love, love, absolutely love, love, love the opportunity to be on the panel with Kettle Intellect and Free Keith. I'm telling you right now, I, I hate freezing. When I tell you I hate, I missed the opportunity. I, know. I, I couldn't sleep for like two days. I'm telling you. I'm like, I was, they were on this show. They were on my show, and I couldn't participate. I'm like, what What in the world of Sam and Barney is really going on? When well, we left, when we left, they said it was our show, but that's another conversation. Okay, so yeah. no, so, so no, that, that's not true. <laughs> so, no, that's not hey, true. Cornerstone Cab closed out by saying, thank you for watching Nick's Freestyle. Did, boy, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Kev, you know Cab you know Cole's Kev Kev kind of bad. You know Cab closes ain't really. Yeah, he, he, him, him and Cully. Yeah, him and Cully. I have to give Cully an hour one in the close because it not, take Cully about not, it take Cully close. about an hour. Not the close. And, and 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 I love Cully. Cully, I love you, bro. <laughs> Cully, I love you, bro. You know, you know, I'm just messing around. So I'm going to tell you right now. So just like people were enamored with 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 the, the five people that were on the court to close out the last preseason game, I am back, baby. The closer is back. So we okay. gonna get, we gonna get some go, some 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 things going on. We gonna we gonna set some things right. We gonna we gonna right this ship right now because the ship is going a, a, astray right now. But we we way off course. We gonna we gonna correct. We gonna do it. Why? Why? Because hey, somebody got something playing in the background. You hear that? Because I can hear. It. I don't know who it is, but I can hear. It. You can't see who's mute or not. I always mute. That's just uh, and I went and got me a podcast set up. Yo, I spent like two hundred twenty dollars on it. Yo, I got me a little microphone headset. I'm like, man, we're going official, yo. <laughs> you going in big? No. Big, big, big style. Go ahead on. Go ahead on. But I'm hey. gonna tell you, this is this is why this is why it's important for for us as a family to make sure that we we, we start buttoning things up. You know what I'm saying? Dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Guess what happened on Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen? Wednesday is the first game of the regular season for the New York Knicks. It's game time, baby. All this, you know, hyperboles and what ifs and, and who could have and all that. We ain't got time for none of that no more. This is this game time. Game time. Look, G Man. G Man. So, 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 so I want to talk to you about this thing. That happened the other day, right? And it's got something to do with the Knicks roster. Okay. And I think I think we may see it during the regular season. Mm -hmm. But 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 I don't know for sure. But if it does happen this way, I think I might be a fan of it. Okay. Right. So my beef with Obadiah Toppin has always been he steps on the floor, run up and down, and don't do nothing. Right. He he'll be he'll be and 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 OB fans are like. Well, he need more minutes. And my beef was, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. And my, but my question to them is, what do he need more minutes for? Would he, more cardio? Because, because you give him 12 minutes and he gives you four points and two rebounds, right? And then, so you want me to give, so you want me to give him 12 more minutes so it could be only eight points and four rebounds. But listen, I'm not knocking Obi. Mm -hmm. I legit want to get, I'm not knocking Obi. Hit right. me out on it. I'm not knocking Obi. But I saw an Obi Toppin that I felt like we should have been seeing last season. Right? OB, OB protecting the rim. OB moving his feet, chasing down rebounds outside of his area. That's something, that's something that elite rebounds, because a good rebounder will get eight rebounders. But an elite rebounder will rebound outside of his area. Mm. Go chase down rebounds. That's how you get to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 rebounds, right? Right. So I saw some of that from Obi, but what I also saw is Obi play physical, right? Yep. Now, prior games, prior season, last season, 
Obi wasn't a physical guy. As a matter of fact, there were times where his man was physical on him and there was no retort. There was no life, no pushback from Obi. Right. But, right? So but, I saw some, so I saw some, saw some of that in the, the, the last preseason game. Mm -hmm. But but if Obi becomes a banger, an internal inside banger, that means he may not be, he may not get those um wide open, um open court, you know, dunks at the other end where he outrun people. Right. Would, as an Obi fan and a Knicks fan, would you be satisfied with Obi being a 10, 10 point eight rebound two block guy as opposed to a 17.5 rebound, you know, 35% three point shooter guy. And what I'm talking about is the OB archetype, right? Which would you prefer? And 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 I'm assuming that both both archetypes lead to Nick's winning. So I so 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 Nick's winning ball games won't be what decides the discussion or, or what sways you. So that, that's a lot to unpack, Free. Um, but I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to respond to that question. And I'm, I'm going to respond to it this way. Number one, there are levels to this, right? There's levels. So if you're telling oh, me. Oh, they're going to Illuminati talking. They're <laughs> Illuminati in the building. <laughs> so, so if you're telling me that I can get a Mr. Obadiah Toppin on a basketball court for 12 to 15 minutes a night, and he's still in the role to where he is playing that nine, ten point, eight to nine rebounds, two block shots, and that's the role he's playing. I'm okay with that because there's room to grow, right? And the reason that he has to do that is because he's playing behind one Mr. All NBA Julius Randle. Randle is not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So we we've been clamoring all last season up into this season through some league and the preseason to figure out, oh, how do we get Obi and Randall on the court at the same time? Well, guess what? They figured it out. And it was it was by the grace of Todd Gibson getting six fouls and, and Tom Thibodeau had to figure out what to do at the five. So what did he do? He put one Mr. Obadiah topic in the game. <laughs> Let's see what you got, young fellow. And Obi produced so, so this this is what we got to realize, right? Understand, myself included, wanted a lot for Mr. Obi Toppin last year. But understand as well that it takes Obi a minute to get his motor going. It's like, you know, back in the day, you know, now, now people going to have to Google this, right? So I want y'all to, to Google uh, manual startup for a tractor. Remember back in the day, you had to take that 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 that, that L bar and put it in the front of the tractor and wind that thing and up. Check it up. Yeah. You know yeah. that, that's Obi. You, you got you got to give him a chance to get going, right? But once he finds his footing, once he's comfortable in that rotation, once he knows what his role is and 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 and, and plays his position, he, he's gonna be great. Nick okay. G, Nick G, why well, I gotta give Obi Toppin twelve minutes to get warmed up? You, you don't have to give him 12 minutes to get warmed up, but you, you don't have to give him nothing this year. His warm-up period was last year. Okay. We passed all that. We passed okay. all that. In some, so, again, we talk about summer league, and people will say, oh, gee, man, that's summer league. What are you talking about? All these things matter. Because I'm going to tell you something, Freaky. When you were 19 years old, you could jump out of bed and go run four miles and still be good and come back and be productive the rest of the day. Can you do right. that today? Okay. Can I answer the question, or are you going to keep on answering the question? I'll keep on answering for you, Nick G, because I don't think you got a good take, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I never felt like Obi Toppin had a motor problem. It was just, hey, he just needs to grow and, and learn. The problem is with many Knicks fans, at least they think that minutes equal development. I mean, right. Specifically, like it, it's it's been proven time and time again that minutes don't exactly lead to development. Right. Um, in particular with Obi Toppin, 
he's been a late bloomer his whole life. On top of that, he he just needs time, not per se on the floor, but in the environment. So the the, the best quote I ever heard from um, Phil Jackson, the infamous Phil Jackson, was when he talked about Chris Stapp's Porzingis development, he said that, and this was why he got Rose the first time, he felt like it's better to develop a player in meaningful games. Mm. Meaning that you play games to get to the playoffs and being in that environment, that intense environment develops you because you have the level of intensity to get to the playoffs. Right. Flip back to guys who've been on this team when we were losing. Right. They were happy. They were celebrating. They were doing all kinds of stuff like Mitch's block party and all that crap. But can we say that that led to development or that actually made them better? No. Like, I, I no. felt like, I, and just a simple comparison, and I, I'll let you all respond too. Um, flip back to um, Devin Booker, right? Devin Booker had uh, a reputation at one point as good stats, um, bad team guy. Poor defender, yeah. Poor defender, right? Right. He goes to the um he gets Ricky Rubio, which no one likes to credit at all. Right. He gets put into a, a role that he, need, he needed to be in, an off ball scorer, and then sometimes a lead ball scorer, not all the time. But then also too, he he went through all the, the 70 point games losing, losing, losing. Right. One one thing I judge people by is if you're so good. Why in the world do you have a number one overall draft pick on your team? On your team. That got there after you. After you, yeah. And you guys still had four losing seasons dead last. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and you could do I'm that. I'm liking what you're math. saying today, Nick G, in the huh? morning. What'd you say? I'm liking the conversation I, in the morning. Yeah, but salute like, to everyone. I'm sorry for interrupting. I just yeah, you you yeah we, we like more than Nick G. I don't like nighttime, Nick G. And congrats. Congrats on the. Oh, congrats <laughs> on the new. Thank you, man. Thank Yo, you. Yo, hey, dude, we gonna have to pitch in and get Nick G a TV, bro, because <laughs> at, at this pace, bro. <laughs> a TV. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot. Duke. Okay, never mind. Never mind. This. That's an old school. That's an old school joke. My bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> Heck, I don't even think I know either. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. To I'm so confused. Kids, what, what, what are we doing? Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, but like. We, we always try to say, and this was the, the biggest red flag, and I hate bringing him back up, but I'll just call him Tim Tebow. Hmm. This is the big thing that people don't, don't look at with the Tim Tebow types. The fans are saying, we drafted this guy, play him, right? And this guy deserves minutes, blah, 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 blah. Minutes, play the game, let him play. And they start singing the song and all that stuff, song and dance. Right? right, but then, and they have the um, the off season videos and all that crap. But then, when it come game time, who has the mentality to do what they showed in video? I I could already sit here and say, Emmanuel quickly has done at least one or two moves that I seen in his um his Instagram videos. Right, <clears throat> Frank did. Um, sorry, um, Tim Eagle <laughs> did. Right? <laughs> Kevin Knox right. hasn't. That was a joke, right. by the way. I got you. Right? <laughs> so all this stuff that we keep talking about, development, about development, let's start off. And matter of fact, I'll amplify what I just said, too. And I felt like Jeff Van Gundy in friend of the show, Jonathan Macri's interview, which I, I'd say Knicks every Knicks fan needs to watch. Wait, um, which one is it? You the said. one where he, where he interviewed Jeff Van Gundy. The 400, um, the 400 episode. So when you watch that, that video, he responds to Phil Jackson. He responds to development, all that stuff. But one thing he said about development, he said, players make coaches. True fact. That's he, true. Then, then on top of that, he added, if the player's good, the they're going to shine. Yeah. yeah. 
forget like why in the world are we do we get caught up with like okay amir sims has told us who he is already it took him four years to get drafted anytime a player does not get go drafted, undrafted yeah four years ago undrafted he, right and, but you know what to be honest with you he technically is still an undrafted player because he was bottom of the draft yeah yeah yep 57 teams said no no, not no, no. You're talking about Jericho Sims, not Jericho Sims, Sims. Jer- Jericho Sims, Jericho. Jer- sorry, but we want to see Jericho. Matter of fact, we want to see Deuce McBride. I, I still don't understand the Deuce hype, but I see the defense, and I don't know what it is with Knicks fans and and the archetype. Like, bro, there were there were pre um sorry summer league. Well, sorry, the preseason game that Deuce played in. Deuce came in and he was blowing just as hard as Mitch, but no one wants to point that out because of favoritism, and they're thinking with this instead of this. Like the kid needs development before he could even think of being even better than IQ. IQ actually averaged at twelve points per game. This kid was tired after five minutes in the first preseason game he played. Anyway, I'll let y'all respond. I want to hear what everyone says. Jay Boogie, what's good? Soul Finger, what's good? CWC, what's good, y'all? I, I'm sorry about that. What's, what's good? Talking. You already know I got something to say. Hey, are you going to say that, that 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 numbers don't matter? <laughs> CWC, I know you're going to get on me about numbers don't matter because I put because I did the slides. Oh stuff. man, here you go with this. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me let me show you. I'm I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Right. And I want to get with you with Sel- with Selden too. Okay. <laughs> so so I did I did a, I did some slides because I, I put some numbers out there and I know you I, I kind of had a feeling you was gonna come on and, and jump down my throat about numbers not mattering. It's more about the eye test. But pause. But, but but yeah, pause, please. But yeah, but what I'm saying is is I believe CWC, and I know you might not agree with me, but I think Randall will have a better season statistically than he had last season. And I think he's going to be a better player also. And I think you and I can compromise on it because he will pass the eye test for you and pass the numbers test for me. Would you think, would you say that's fair? Yeah, I agree with that. Because okay. now, now he trusts people. Okay. He didn't trust a lot to create his own shot. Right. He didn't trust several people on the team. That's right. why when he was getting double team, he didn't know who to pass it to. Right. Right. And plus, and plus, um, cutters were being bumped. And and so shout out to Mitchell Robinson, right? Because I watched the difference between Mitchell Robinson and Taj Gibson. When Taj Gibson was in, in the game. Cutters ran the baseline freely, like kids at a picnic. And when Mitch came in the game, Mitch touched all the cutters that cut baseline. He put a hand on them or bumped them off path, right? And it's one of those games, that, one of those things that don't show up in the stat sheet, but but it will. But you notice defensively that people had poorer shots and had worse shot selection. Because the timing of the play was thrown off by them getting bumped. Right? It's kind of like when you watch the New York Giants wide receivers. They can't beat, they can't beat bump and run. The line can't block, and the quarterback is inaccurate, right? But they make up for it by having a dummy head coach calling calling whack plays, right? Yeah. And so what it, what it looks like is a fire drill. It looks like a kindergarten fire drill on offense, right? And so with that said, with that said, and, and I'm using the Giants as an example so that people can understand what I'm saying. When when cutters from the other team, when people are trying to run their plays and are constantly being bumped off path, it slows up the time. And now the ball handler it has to hold the ball longer and maybe pat and maybe has a longer distance to pass the ball which means the defense has more of a chance to disrupt the offense. Right? This is what I'm getting at. 
So e everything you just said, Freezy, is accurate. Um, and I, I would not disagree with you at, at any any turn. Um, but I think we, we all saw that let, let's not get it twisted, right? They're, 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 I don't think anyone would disagree with the fact that the New York Knicks are a better basketball team than the Right? That, that's a fact. But we want what I don't need is a Mitchell Robinson that's only good for the first three minutes because he's laboring, coming up and down the floor. So he, he's got to get that conditioning down. I understand he played more minutes in, in a preseason game that uh, that he, he thought about coming into the game, right? Hence, I think mm -hmm. that led to, you know, the, the closers that were on the floor in the fourth quarter uh, to add to, again, Todd Griffin following out. But if, if, if Mitch can get back up to, you know, NBA – caliber type uh, conditioning and, and be able to play meaningful minutes with the energy that we need so he can carry that additional mass that he put on during the summer. So this is what people understand. It, it's, it's admirable for you to be in the gym. You're getting your weight up because you don't want to get pushed around anymore. I understand that. I, I salute you 100%, my young fella. But guess what? When you put that mask on, you got to carry that up and down the floor as long as you're on the court. And that, that's, that's, that, that's added to the energy that you have to be able to expend. So he got to figure that out. And I'm sure he will. But, you know, I would say that there, there was a noticeable difference when you have a Todd Gibson in the game versus the Mitchell Robson. It, it's very noticeable. For sure. Um, so, uh, so oh, my. Kev is saying that G-Man is rambling again. Just for the record. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Um, so, so this is what I'm not going to do, right? I, I'm not going to allow the little gremlin to derail me from what I'm trying to say. So but see, they multiply at night, though. So that's the problem. That's the good part about being on the morning drive. You know? <laughs> so Nick G, this is why I don't feed him after midnight. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I could just the bad. The best part about being on the morning drive right now is everybody looks good. Shout out to all my brothers out there. But that Hawaiian shirt that you would have wore today. Oh my goodness! Oh my! Goodness. You know what it came out. You know what it came out. He look. He in, he in this superhero disguise right now. He got the Hawaiian shirt on with the sunglasses right now. Yeah. Talking about if you, what are you like spying on people? Like, what are you trying to like be incognito? Wow. Oh, yeah, anyway, I, I went there. I went there. So I, I, I love I, I didn't I want to respond to I wanted to respond to CW. Like what evidence or are you basing the, the idea that Randall didn't trust his teammates on? Because like 65% of um Bullock's three pointers were assisted by Randall. Like it was like a real high number. Um RJ's was like 50, 60, somewhere around there too. Like it all revolved around Randall getting other people the ball, the whole offense. And even if you, and maybe are you talking about the year before, which even in that, like. No, I'm talking about last Randall, year. You're talking and, about and the year before. But what do you base? I don't understand the basis of it. It just baffles okay, my mind. Okay, okay, okay. When somebody getting double team, right? All right. And they know the double team coming, and when they look at you, and still got the ball in their hand, they don't trust you to make that shot, and they don't trust you to create your own shot. So that's why he was getting double team a lot. And he wasn't passing the ball out to his teammates. Mm. So, so I, I guess the, the, the question is, do how, how do you feel about the well, okay, let me back up for a minute. How do you feel? How do you feel about what impact Randall's going to have on this team this year, based on how the roster is currently constructed? Who you talking, me, G man? Yes, sir. Oh, well, he got he got Kimball Walker and he got plenty of people that could shoot, so he trusts them more than he trusts last year. 
You know what I mean? So he know he knows these two guys can create their own shot. They know they could shoot. And you know, that's it. Wait, so, no, 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 no. I can't let you get away with that one. They only played four games so far. Number two, like Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop the press. Stop that the is, press. That's hold on, hold on. Fournier, Fournier came from the magic. And you already know what he could do. And he went to Boston. You already know what he could do. So now he with the Knicks. He did nothing in Boston. Nothing. What? Are you nothing. serious? Yes, I'm dead serious. They did nothing. Why, man? As soon oh as God. as soon as Fournier got to, to Boston, do, do, he got hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you he know Boston? Nothing. Do you do you know basketball, man? Okay, this so what is you why trying I, to say, Fournier? What, what are you trying to say? He ain't nothing. No, no, no. I never said he ain't nothing. I said he did That's what nothing. That's it sounds like. I said you he said he ain't did do nothing. nothing. You said he ain't do nothing in Boston. Yes, because he got COVID on, as soon as he got there. So how could he, he do something if he's sick? He, he ain't had chemistry with the guys, but he was doing his own thing though. He got sick. It's, as it's soon all as about he got chemistry, there. You can't man. Play when you're sick. Protocol. Hey, hey, so so dude, so dude, there go that word. Remember what we got on Saturday night? Do it, boy. I play ball. I play ball. <laughs> this is what I do. What does that have to mean? What does that have anything to do with with anything we're but talking about? I, I can it's see. I can see from the eye. I can see from the eye. You trying to say funny act? This is what you trying to say? He can't play ball. I never what said those saying? words. I never said you, those words. That's what you saying. You saying you saying he ain't do nothing with Boston. He did not he do anything with Boston. He's been with Boston. He's been, he been with Boston much. like less than a month. He played with Boston like less than a month. Come on, man. He been with he been with Orlando, Orlando Magic during his career. So you already know what he can do. Part, but with Boston, so why, why the New York Knicks got him there if he can't do that? Why the New York Knicks pick him up? It's because he could create off the ball and stuff. But so far, what he has done so far is nothing really to talk about because it's four games. You can't really build anything off of that. Man, come on. What do you think he's going to do in the regular season, man? What do you think he's going to do in the regular season? You think he's going to score eight points in the regular season? Okay. Hey, good morning, on, real quick. Hey, get this hey, guy off good the Good pen, morning. Man. Yo, Charlie was going to be real disrespectful. Jay Book, what's up? What's good, Jay Book? How y'all men doing, man? What's good, Jay Book? Jay Book. Great to see y'all brothers on this great Monday, man. Blessings and blessings <laughs> to all you. All your families hope everybody is healthy and safe and ready yes, for today. What I mean by ready for today, be grateful and thankful that you have a job to go to instead of feeling like ah, I gotta go to work because it's Monday. Yes. Everybody in the chat, I need y'all to hit those like buttons. You are getting well entertained this Monday morning <laughs> with your day moving for our like buttons to be that low. Smash that you know like button. Saying? I just wanted to chime in between my two brothers real quick because, you know, back in the days we used to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Up north, we didn't allow you to wrestle. Y'all wrestling. Let me break y'all up for a minute and allow y'all to go back to sparring and boxing. I want to see some hands this time, though. But listen, man, the great thing that Julius Randle was going to have impact for the team this year, you saw it the other night at the buzzer. I'm going to tell you that. The buzzer. What that means is Julius don't have to use all that – Energy that work ethic the carriers all the way through an entire game. He's gonna be able to close out this year. And that shot he just made is gonna carry over into the season. You know how great and beautiful he felt inside that he hit a buzzer beater. You know how great the team looked and felt about him hitting that buzzer beater. That's where I want Julius most biggest impact is the fourth quarter. I don't care about averaging 25 points. I don't care about averaging 22. Average 12 to 13 points in the fourth quarter. That's what the big major dudes do. They close out games. And that's what I need Julius to do this year, to close out these games as we move along from the first to the fourth. That's what I need Julius to do more importantly than anything than anything else, man. Because that shot he hit the other day, and they could not help. The sea was wide open. It showed you. Okay, no help. Okay, let me show you. I got you. Bong. And Tom said, make sure it's the last shot. They was on the same page. That's all I want Julius to do. And I ain't got no numbers on how many games we're going to win. No, none of that. 
I got one number and two letters. Three R D. I want third C point blank. That's what I want. You can always count on my man Jake Boogie to come through dropping verbs and nouns. And that is why he is known as the closer, ladies and gentlemen. It's hard to follow a, a boogie up. It's the one and only. Hard. It's hard. I'm telling you. It is hard out here for sure. But look, everything he said is 100 percent And and I I, I I also want to echo the fact that with the roster as currently constructed, uh, Randall doesn't have to play as many minutes as he played last year. Although, although, right. although, if you look at minutes played in, in preseason on the Knicks, who has both minutes? Right. Randall and RJ. So you, you can see how we can uh, temporarily slip back into what we did last season. But I think that as these guys, when I say guys, I'm talking about a Kimba Walker and an Evan Fournier kind of kind of uh, submit their 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 role on this team. Randall's minutes will be able to uh, we, we can decline some of those minutes. But we yeah. In the first the chemistry is not there yet. Like, they have to build that chemistry. Because, like, if you look at the early offense that we played, there was a ton of triangle last year. There was a ton of uh, – at the beginning, like, Alfred Payton took probably, what, six to ten shots per game. By the end of the season, he was taking five. Yeah. It, you can't compare, like – anyway, like, to me, Randall is still the, the engine for the team, no matter what. The one thing that you still have to like break down and look at everything that that has happened with this team, the additions or whatever, we've gotten better versions of what we didn't have on offense, but worse versions on defense. You you start looking at what we did on offense last year. We're just gonna spread guys out. Number one, RJ is gonna be on one side, forty percent um, three point shooter. Evan Fournier is gonna be on the other side. 50% corner shooter. So the court is going to stay split and you cannot come off of, of, of Randall, um, your guy, RJ or Evan to guard Randall, which is what happened in, in the Atlanta series, the downfall. And I was listening to Bill, Bill Simmons talk about um, Kimba just yesterday. Kimba's defense is the, is, is the biggest flaw here. Like, the way Kimba, he, he's been a bad defensive player for the past three seasons. Three seasons. I'm not saying that from any, like, thing I'm making up. I'm talking about by the numbers, by the eye test of people who are Celtics fans. I've listened to Celtics podcasts. They did not like Kimba's defense, period. He tries, and he gives a valiant effort, but he's just not a good defensive player right now. Age, etc. All of that plays a role, and the idea that Evan, I'm sorry, uh, the, the third holiday brother was cooking him, oh yeah, and bullying him out the way like that. And needle. Oh my God, I I could have punched. Ep- anyway, whatever. Needle also he benched at the end. So so Nick, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you think that that played a role in in uh, the minutes that Grimes played? In, in the last uh, last preseason game, because when Grimes came in, all that point guard hoo ha went out the window. Um, from a defensive standpoint, okay, I think this is one thing that people have to at least understand or add in there. It's gonna be tough. I don't know who's gonna fill this role in the end. I think it's gonna be quickly, but. When they come in, I think every, pretty much every sequence on defense, they put someone to to go full court on the ball handler. Right. Sometimes it was RJ. Sometimes, most of the time, it's quickly. Just being honest. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about NBA offense, you do not go full court. You meet them at half court so you can save your energy. Right. So I look at quickly shooting numbers and they've decreased. And every time he does that, like it's hard because you get screened off. You get all kinds of stuff. It burns your energy. I think Grimes was just a fresh body to actually play defense full court. Like it, 
you you can say whatever you want, like do the math or whatever and stuff like that. But he did good full court defense as well as when when he met the person at the half, because you're not gonna let Derrick Rose do it, right. or else their jumper gets flat. Okay. So like, it's a balancing act. You want to keep pressure on the on on the player so that they could still you can still get the ball back on on offense. So it becomes a reverse scenario of the way we think of off, um, defense. Uh, it's hard hard concept to understand, but like Brooklyn runs their their guards as centers sometimes. In this case, like we're saying, normally the center is a defensive um, stalwart. We're just saying the point guard is the defensive stalwart, and we're gonna break down the. The, the the ball handler before they even make the first pass. Yo, Charlie Ward, them- brother. Yo, what is he doing? Hey, Dick, man. Get this guy out of here, man. What is going on? <laughs> you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so because, uh, Rhonda said that um, Erica and Ania are on the phone. I have okay. a job. <laughs> Bro, you got to turn your cam off. <laughs> no, man. Y'all on fire this morning. Y'all on fire this morning. Y'all on fire this morning. Y'all bugging, man. Y'all bugging. Well, I have to turn my camera off. Yeah, you got to turn your camera off. What? Turn your camera off. My my camera's already off. You got to be respectful. You got to be respectful to the YouTube guidelines. You can't exactly, be going in the bathroom. Come on. What, what are you talking about? This is this just, what I do. Bro, it, it's not that hard to turn off the camera when you're in yeah. bro. Just turn it off. Yeah. So why are you paying attention to what I'm doing? Bro, this you can't, little conversation. You can't be serious. Boy, look at here. This, this, <sighs> Monday mornings. This, Monday mornings. Well, welcome to Monday mornings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this, uh, this, this is what we do. But, but, but to Nick G's point, I, I would tell you this. I, I agree. Um, I think that, again, this is a great problem for the Knicks to have to try to yeah. figure out how, how to, you know, offset what we lost from the defensive aspect of the team to what we gained from the offensive aspect. And, and you know, balance that thing out to have us uh, uh, us moving forward. But I'm excited about this the year to come, and I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to watching these Knicks on, on the hardwood. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to share something really real with y'all. I'm going to tell y'all some actual facts of what I know. If Grimes breaks this rotation, I'm going to say it again. If he breaks this rotation, somebody's on the way out the door. I'm telling you that. And the reason why I say that is because it's a different from last year and this season. I'm 53 years old. In my mind frame, I think I can still play, but I know I can't play. <laughs> What I mean by that, I could have went on the oh Knicks last God. year and quickly spot and mm. got the same playing time last year because he had nobody in front of him. Mm-hmm. What I mean, Peyton, you was in the way. What I mean, Frank, you was in the way. He had no guards in his way to stop him from doing what he was doing last year. As we say, it's hard to break Tom Thibodeau's you know what I'm saying? It's hard for a rookie to break his break his way of letting of being able to play. Only person that got in quickly's way last year was when D Rose came. So what I'm saying by that is now you got you got Burks, you got Kimball, D Rose, quickly, um, 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 you got Evan, you got RJ, you got a lot of guys in front of Grind. Whereas he's not even supposed to get on the floor. Right. Mm. Shit, he was supposed to get on the floor because he had nobody stopping him, like quickly. But if that man breaks this rotation some kind of way and starts getting a lot of burn, I'm telling you, somebody's spot is out the door. Point blank. Because he got a lot of people in front of him. He got a lot of, you know, swerving and, and curving to get through. A lot of obstacles. If he, if Tom says this dude, I'm going to give him a chance. And you start seeing him get more and more and more playing time as the season go over. The Vinci code is broke. 
He's going in. I'm telling you that. <laughs> I'm telling you that. I do want to hear hear you hear your response to this. Um, if Grimes makes the the ro- roster, is it because of a trade? The roster? Yeah, like no, I mean, like you know, like, like he's he's already made the team. No, no, no. He he's on the team. In other words, if he's getting heavy heavy minutes, is it because someone gets traded? No, no, I don't no. feel that way. I, I, I feel know. like he's yeah. already on this team to play right now. If well, you go okay. back to the, to the, if you go back before the draft, look and see how many people are saying that we're not going to draft all these players. We're not yeah. going to take all these picks. We're yeah. going to trade these picks. Guess right. what Tom did? He went and grabbed these players. He okay. them for a reason. Because these are his, his caliber type players that he wants inside his system. That's why he made these picks. This ain't the office pick. The only office pick that was made was Obi Toppin. Now, when Tom showed everybody what I could do, that's what I like. And it shows that Leon and Tom was on the same page. Always, you know, always. Scouting, scouting this year, you only see Tom out there with that clipboard taking notes. You ain't right. see the owners and all that. This is Tom's show, and he went and grabbed whoever he wanted. Um, but okay, I'm gonna go the traditional media route in this question because I just I, I, just to further it, it to me, if Grimes is getting minutes, that means Alec Burke is not getting minutes. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Is that a problem? No. I, to me, it's not a problem. I think no. Tom will will use whoever the hot hand is. So, so Nick, yeah, yeah, it matters too. I, I, I would say this, right? If, if we think back to an interview, I saw a post game interview, or maybe even a a post practice interview, when and when Tibbs was talking about uh, practice, right? And he was talking about what you have to do to earn minutes on the floor in a game. He said, he Tom Thibodeau says you have to be exceptional in practice to get on the floor during the game. You have to be exceptional. So the fact that that we saw Grimes in the last game of preseason playing as many minutes as he played, that means he, he saw somebody in practice. True. I don't that necessarily means, think so. Well, he, he was see, on Because he tried out – the thing he did is he tried out Knox for, for one game. He did good, and then he played him for a little bit less. And I feel like people are just over evaluating him playing like six minutes of the game, like just because he played Grimes. Yes, he played six minutes of the game. He played like six minutes. He didn't play that many minutes. He played twenty one. He played twenty one minutes, dude. Come on, man. Come on. Man. He played. Oh wait, no. I for, oh I forgot. No, this is the game. Come on, man. Oh yeah, but that's because Alec Burks was out though. I, he was the only. He was the only person that's next up. It, well, it was no, him or you, you Knox. still had um, you still had Knox. You still yeah. had um, him or Knox. But it's for you it had was for McBride. The small McBride could have been up. It was for the small forward position though, because that's what Alec Burks plays in the backup. So it was either Grimes or Knox at that at that point right there, because then they would have had D Rose, IQ, and McBride, but they wouldn't have ran something like that. So. I don't. I, I'm. I don't really look into that too much, to be honest. Because Alec Burks was out for rest. I mean, Grimes played good in those last, those last few minutes. And Tib said that he liked the way he played defense. But like, other than that, I don't think I, I'm not reading too much into that, to be honest. Well, you know, it, it, this it is one of those things that you know you, mm-hmm. you take people to the library and, and show them the books, whether you read them or not. From you, but I'm telling you right now. Well, what you just said has is, is is impactful because I believe what I saw from a, a one Mr. Quentin Grimes has sustenance in, in what go what, how we move forward um, in, in this year. So I'm not telling you that Grimes is going to crack the rotation, but I'm telling you that what Boogie said is if he does, then people need to take notes. These guys are not on this team. Just to be here and, and be that Theo Pinson. That's not why these young kids are here. These young kids are here to make a name for themselves. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't believe for one second 
that a Deuce McBride is not enamored with the amount of minutes that Grimes played in the last preseason game? You're crazy. Or what? In, 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 in McBride's mind, he's like, what do I have to do to get the minutes that Grimes just played? Whose spot do I need to take to get those minutes? And and that's going to be the mindset. I'm, I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this, this season is about to be fun. This is about to be fun. We, we're about to have the internal uh, camaraderie or, or that, that, that class in, in, in practice to say, okay, if I'm a bride, who, who, I'm on second team. Okay, well, let me get Kimba. Let me pick up Kimba at half court and, and see what he can do. Let me pick up Rose and see what he can do. So I can solidify my, my value to this team. And then all that translates on the court once you're playing against opponents that are not wearing these jerseys. I'm telling you right now, Boston, for anybody that's in the chat right now that's a Boston Celtics fan or knows a Boston Celtics fan, I'm telling you right now, tell her that, yeah, get, get your lunch pail ready because <laughs> y'all about to get work. I'm telling you. It's going to be a close game. I don't, I don't believe. I think it's gonna be a blowout. I, I got. I think, think one fourteen, one oh seven. I don't think we're blowing them out. I, I gotta agree with. I gotta agree with how Duke because the first this first game is gonna be. I mean, right now chemistry wise, we're not totally together, and you know I, I don't look for us to come out just like when uh, Mitch came out. You know, a lot of people were all hyped up for him. I was glad to see him, but I knew Mitch was gonna be tired. He hadn't played since February, and right. and you, you know, and you got that weight, and your body's got to adjust. You got to get that win. Um, the other thing is, is yeah, you know, Kimba does. He he he. You know, bless his heart, he does try to go out there and play some defense or uh, attempt. But his defense isn't the best after that last game. I mean, he got cooked by Net. Not only just Holiday, but uh, Neto. Neto was cooking him. Out yeah, there. man. Neto was cooking him. I give it to him. He tries, and so you have to switch it up. So that's going to be – it is going to be a concern. However, I've said it before, his offense can help with help as well because whoever's guarding him is going to have to get on him and wear him out. But I don't see the Boston game a blowout. I'm, you know, I'm not being uh, negative Ned or, uh, or nothing like that, but I'm just going to be a realist about it because I think it's going to take us about 10 games – uh, well, 10 games to see where I go. Well, I'm going to just say 20 games. I'm going to say 20, 20 games for it to really be solid, to be solid and to see which way we can do, actually go as uh, as far as gelling. Um, but it hey, took you know what, Soul Finger? Finger? Hey, Soul Finger, I uh, know who got bad defense too, but his offense could carry us too, um, is Derrick Rose. Well, his defense I mean, is bad. I mean, yeah, it it's is. terrible. I mean, it's not, but the thing is, is – Derrick Rose, the, the thing is, is Derrick Rose on the court was more effective. You know he I mean? got hops. He got hops to actually, like, jump up and contest. But Kemba, like, Kemba is literally like a free bucket. <laughs> if, yeah, you're, if you're over the, that, the height of 6'2". Yeah, his his size played a factor, man. Tim, Marcus Tim was, Smart is going to kill him, it, like, in-game. In like, he's, he's actually going to try to go against him every time. So the, it's going to be tough for him. Yeah, I mean, I, I gotta, I, I gotta agree with Hadoop. I mean, he, you know, he's the way he said it. And yeah, Rose, Rose has never been known as a top flight defender. Both of them will, will go out there and attempt and play defense. Um, uh, but Rose has more size, which helps. And as bad as we all were on, um, and I'm not saying I want him back. I don't want him back because I said it. I was the first one who said that he was trying out for the Singapore Sea Slugs. As an EP, however, <laughs> his size, his size does help because he played defense. So Kimba, offensively, he's gonna kill somebody, man. Once he's get, once he's rolling, he's gonna kill him. But defensively, in certain situ- in, in some situations, it's gonna hurt us. So you kind of yeah. gonna have to, you know, work with one hand, you know, live on wishing one hand and and and, and oh, the other. <laughs> yeah, and um, so. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I just want to say the thing is, like, Kemba and Fournier so far in the preseason, they haven't had any good games yet. So it's True. almost due for them to have a good game. So I'm I'm feeling like at least one of them is going to have a good game next game. Um, yeah. I think Randall is going to get his 20. I actually think RJ is going to have a good game, though, because I think he, he usually does good against the Celtics. I think he's going to be – he's going to do good this game. 
Yeah, he does. Uh, RJ, I don't know what it is. It's like he got a he circles Celtic games. He put it in big a big red circle. Like, oh, I got the Celtics, you know. Uh, but it's just going to take a little time. First twenty games, definitely to get that the chemistry going. One of those two are going to have a good game first. Once both of them are rolling together, you know, then then it'll be a different thing. And then you, you still everybody. I mean, look at Evan. Evan, his shot had his shot has been up and down. I'm not worried about it because mm-hmm. he's going to lock in. And the, also the fact that the man can play without the ball, he can move without the ball. That's something that a hey, no knock on Reggie, but Reggie couldn't do that. I mean, look, you had if you if you had to depend on your life for Reggie to move without the ball and make a layup, would you do it? Especially nope. a reverse layup. I don't think I ever I ever said no. Bullock is is attempting a reverse layup. Like someone no. got him a nice pass in the preseason and he got Good a point, contested dude. reverse layup. Like the thing for me is that Evan wasn't like he was giving up a lot of shots. Like he he was just not not passing it. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not too mad at it, but he was passing I up. I and, am. If you five feet from the basket, why are you passing the ball? Turn no, no, yeah, no. Like later. it's preseason, so I'm not mad because it's like. There's obviously like you're trying in preseason, but at the mm-hmm. same time you're not. So like every bucket now and every shot you don't take is really gonna matter. And I know they know that, so I, I I'm not too worried. Yeah, you know, like I said, this this is gonna be a little bit of time. Give them a little time, but like I said, I, I remember it was it was I can't remember which game it was, but um, Bullock had a full. I mean, he was the lane was right there. Instead of making the layup, he passed. You know, going for the layup, he started driving in and then he passed it off. Or ran to the other side to shoot a three. He's, had, he's done that a few times, but hey, yeah, it is what it is. He's not, you know. He, I appreciate what he did for us, but this is what we got now, and I like what we got. We we got depth, but a lot of these cats gonna be pushing one another. Grimes is gonna push people, exactly. as you can see. Um, Deuce, I'm I'm one of those. I like Deuce. I like his d- uh, defensive tenacity. Uh, it's just that the guy, he, the, the young cat, needs time to to develop and know how to run to run the offense the way Tiz wants to run it. And then as far as him being an introvert, it's gonna, it's, it's you know, you got to get him out of shell. There's been plays where he was out there on defense, didn't say anything. Exactly. You know, that's a big problem. It, His communication is a big problem. Yeah, and you need that. I don't care what you do. Communication is needed in life. Period. You know, you don't. You know, it, no matter what you do, especially on the court. Uh, uh, Pat, like we, we go back to Ewan. Think about the days when Pat was out there playing. He was calling out those screens, or when somebody the cutter coming on the back door, or something like that. You know, you need that, and that's going to take time for that young cat to do that because he was never in those positions and before. So you know, some of the guys are gonna, uh, but but to, to what Boogie Boogie was saying, it's going to be some smoke in the city because Grimes, you know, it was. Everybody has everybody's kind of loading up in their camps. I like I like both the young the, the, the guards, both Grimes and um, Deuce. You know that we have here. I'm not gonna say anything about uh, Rokas because he's overseas, and I like that young cat too. I like that. But both of them do what they bring to the table. It's gonna push people. Like you said, IQ didn't have anybody in front. Now he's got somebody in front and behind. So it's gonna push everybody to get better. If you don't get better, hey, your hey. spot get took it. It's point blank. Somebody's over your shoulder, you know. But you know, we know Kimber can't play that D. But if he can, if he can play smart D, like run his man off the tray into the help, and now that Mitch is back, you know what I'm saying? When Mitch get in shape, he's gonna be that rim protector. You know what I'm saying? So you don't you don't have to be able to just, you know, get run your man into some help. Not, you know what I'm saying, just get beat all the time where your man get a bucket. You know what I'm saying? Then that's a good job, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people, hey, Steph Curry can't play no D, but they find a way to hide him. So we're going to have to do what the Atlanta Hawks did with us. We're going to have to find ways to hide Kimball. Like they put him on Reggie Bullock so he ain't have to play no D the whole series. Some ways we're going to have to figure it out, and it's all up to Tom. You know, I put everything inside Tom's head. He got to figure everything out, man. He got to make all the right decisions, push all the right buttons, make all the right adjustments. This is on you now, Tom. You got a team like you wanted, the team where you wanted to be at. You, you solidified almost three deep at every position. This is on you, Tom. It's up to you to make this thing work, you know what I'm saying? The office did their job. The players are here. They're in shape. 
They healthy. Everybody's vaccinated. It's on you, Tom, with that clipboard. You and your assistant. Get this right here thing together, man, and, and we'll see what happens, man. I, I, I think we can really have a beautiful season, man. I, I, I'm, I, I'm waiting on I can't wait, man. I can't I, wait, man. I yeah, but, that. yeah, we're going to have to hire Rose on defense, too, like Kimber. Not, no, you don't really got to – you don't got to no. hide him on defense. And the thing with, like, yeah, Curry, like – Curry is bad, like he's bad one on one defender, but he's really good at reading the passing lanes. Exactly. Yeah. That's why he gets a lot of him and James Harden. Like they're not good actual defenders, but they're really good in those passing lanes and they get a good amount of steals. Like they so both led the league. Rose is not a good defensive player. That yeah, but you don't gotta you don't gotta hide him because he can contest shots at least. Kemba is a free bucket. Yeah. The, the, the just saying that Rose is a bad defender is just like minimizing what he actually is. He's actually a good one on one defensive player, but as a team, no, defender, not, he as a one on one, he is just fine. Like, bro, you could look I at him and he's six for this man, but if you put him no, through screen, all right, you know, all basketball, all hell, CW. Anyway, but like I was saying, Rose can stick with a point guard. What are you talking about? Rose can defend point guards and he can actually stick Rose with his man. Rose can stick and contest point exactly. guard shots. Kemba can't, just, doesn't have the hops to do it. He doesn't even have, like, the, like he's not tall enough to contest someone that, like, Dame isn't even tall, but if if um D. Rose is on him and he just jumps up, he'll at least contest it a little mm-hmm. slightly. Like, yeah. that's the oh, difference. That's, that's still a big we, difference in the shot. He can alter the shot with his size and his ability to be able to jump, just like with with Mitch. Because everybody's looking for blocks as a main thing, but if you alter the shot, that's the form of playing. That's playing defense as well. That helps you defensively. Kemba, what they're saying is Kemba with his size, he can't. He's not out jumping anybody. He's just shooting right but over. I, it was I understand easy. what you're saying though, but Rose can't guard nobody. You have to high ropes like Kemba. No, you I, don't. I think with my whole eyes. So I don't think, right I don't think you're saying the same thing because the Kemba, like you actually like have you're not to hide. Listening, you you gotta hide Kemba. It's not about listening. It's about watching. You you can't hide Kemba. You, you can hide, you <laughs> can't hide Kemba, and you don't need to hide the Rose. Yes, you do. He watches basketball better than all of us here. Oh, okay. Just, just let him have it. Just let him have it. Come on, man. You don't know nothing about ball, do I? I, I, don't, I don't, ball you know time. everything. I'm going to stick to cricket. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring, <laughs> ring, 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 ring. Smash the like button. There's ring, 90 ring, people watching. Ring, ring. Smash that like button. Subscribe and turn that notification oh bell on. Ring, so ring, you don't ring, miss ring, another ring. show. So, hey, listen. Check this out, right? So, again, the only, the only metric we have to go off right now are four games in the preseason unless you want to bring up what happened last season, which last season is irrelevant because the roster changes this year. We're talking about four games. So whatever whatever analysis that you have, whatever critiques that you have, whatever criticism that you have, you're basing it off of four preseason games. And in preseason, we know that we're trying to figure out what the identity of this team is going to be moving forward. Let's focus on that for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Let, let's, let, let's look at it this way, right? So I've heard that, that Kimba is a, a liability on defense, and I'm sure that the Knicks, when they sign him, they do that. They trade it up from offense, from, from defense to offense, right? So we, we talk about uh, uh, Evan Fournier. So he's someplace in, in, the, in the gray zone right now, right? But the fact that I saw – a, a a rookie playing major minutes because we rested Burks. You know, I don't I don't care. It, it's irrelevant. But Tibbs was comfortable enough to have this young man in the lineup in the closing minutes of the game. That was impactful for me, for me. So when I look at who closed, so somebody tell me who closed out the game fourth quarter. Last preseason game. Who was on the D Rose, okay. Grimes, RJ, Randall, and Mitch. No, Mitch was not on the court. Try again. Her oh, no, Obi. Third, yeah, third, Obi. third game? Obi. No, the last, last game. game. Yeah, it, it was Obi yeah. instead of Mitch. Obi was and, that's, and they had they had um D Rose and Grimes playing over Fournier and Kemba because they were they were stinking it up bad. Yes, they were. They were so so we talk about chemistry chemistry matters. 
these guys. So, so are you telling me that I, I, I believe this? This is what I believe. I believe the fact that the rooks were able to play in summer league. That transition with the people that's on the roster right now. Now, you can agree or disagree. I don't care. But I'm telling you right now, when you have these guys on the court at the same time, mm -hmm. that matters. Fournier, Kimba, not in summer league. Who's in summer league? Yeah. You got uh, Quickly, Obi, McBride, and Grind. And Sam, he's a new And that transition, I'm, look, I, I'm not. I'm not telling you that that Grimes is a, is, is the next thing coming. I'm not telling you McBride is the next thing coming. But I'm telling you is this quickly. You'll notice these young guys are hungry. They're not just sitting back saying, "I'm just happy to be." I'm happy to have a next jersey. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy to, to, to say that I'm playing with New York Knicks. That's not what they do. Tibbs uh, has already told you, in order for you to find minutes on the floor, you have to be exceptional in practice. For Quentin Grimes to be on the floor in the fourth quarter, man, look, if you, if you can't read the tea leaves right there, I don't know why you're here. I really don't. I don't know why. I don't know why you sit up here listening to me right now. If you can't read me, please. Some, somebody help me out. Good lord. You said, when you said practice, when you said practice. That made me think about Kimba at the end of our first game in preseason. You remember? We talking about said? practice. He said, "Yo, not a game, but practice." practice. Yo, AI. That man practice said at the end of that game one that, "Yo, our practices are monsters." We can't. We couldn't wait to get up out of here and get on the floor. Those was his words. So them practices that we're having are very serious, man. But y'all must slide off, my great man. I gotta go take care of some business, man. Love y'all, man. And shout out to that great, that great, that great versus battle from last night, Big Daddy Kane and KRS One. You know what I'm saying? A real epic situation, man. At his finest, man. Hip hop one for sure. I know that's right. Hip hop won, just like the New York Knicks winning. Salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's, y'all. Salute. Yo, I, I, I tell you this. If, if if everybody watching right now don't have chill bumps on their arms thinking about what's about to happen on Wednesday, something wrong with you. I'm just telling you. Something thanks. wrong. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm like a little kid on Christmas morning. Uh, to be honest, you know, I, I said it a lot. I'm like that little kid, man. I can't wait. Um, this is this is long overdue because this is the the tomorrow. Uh, this, this game, that first game, is the first step in our journey. You know, as OC says, you know, like shout out to OC. You know, eventually we face that that matter eventually in time, but just have to be patient about it. Uh, lineups, uh, our lineups got to flesh out and chemistry got to roll. Um, right. for for the right. most part, people put ex some some expectations mm. are slightly higher than others, and hey, that's all good. That's what that was fandom is. It's okay, but you know, let's just take it a game at a time. I'm I'm rocking. I mean, if you came down to predictions, I'm still jumping up and down like that little bad kid on the bed in the couch. <laughs> and, uh, overall, fifty. I think two wins. However, on the low end, I see 48. And I see that happen in case of an uh, injury or two or something out of the blue. Uh, uh -oh, did, did I hear a prediction? You did. It's not like you did predict, though. Caesar prediction. Oh! Here we go! It's about to get spicy. No! Oh, so, <laughs> so, this is the time, ladies and gentlemen, that you, as, a, as an adult, have to stand up and be accountable for what you say. So right now, and I'm look, I, I'm, I'm about this, right? I don't listen to people to do things that I'm not willing to step out on the ledge and do my thing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna tell you right now, Freezy. I'm gonna tell you right now. This is what's going on for the New York Knicks season this year. 52 wins minimum. I'm telling you right now. That's wait what a I'm minute, doing. wait a minute. Did I hear a Bold predictions. Season <laughs> 52 wins, baby. 
52 wins. Now, I, okay. I understand. I understand if people are not willing to step out on the ledge. Uh, I feel you. I understand. But I view the game mm -hmm. in a different lane. A totally different lane. 52 wins. Did you see I, mine? G -Man, G Man, did you see mine? I did not. I did not. Okay. Say? Okay. You didn't see my season prediction. Okay. Wait. Okay. So let me show you. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I I don't feel like I'm, I'm out on a limb at all because I I can get with the fifty four. That's only two more wins. Hey, and let me apologize too, man. Hey, so I jumped off camera a little bit. I wasn't gone, but but um, so I had the telephone number scrolling at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I just got off the camera so I can answer the messages from people that have been hitting us up. Right, 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 right. You, you know what I'm saying? So, 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 guys, don't think, don't think I just disappeared. But, but I did. We do have a thing that says messages show. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? And, and and you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm, I was just you know kind of kind of backstage. Um, I didn't yes. know. I didn't. I didn't know it was gonna be that busy. With the messages. Oh, <laughs> come on now. So, hey. so shout out, shout out to everybody who who is messaging the show. So, and, so, and G man, if it's dope, if it's something, if it's something super spicy, I, yep. I'm I'm gonna do gonna do a, a, a animation and put it up on the screen. That's what I'm talking about. That that's what's up. That's what's up. Mo, what's good, my brother? What's good? What's good? <laughs> good to Let's see go, you. Giants. That's good. Danny, Ooh, shout out to Mo. What's happening? Good. What's good? What's good? Sarge is hey. in the building. What's good, Sarge? Hey. Look, hey, hey, Danny, man. how did how did how did Lucas do yesterday in the game? Lucas did awesome. He didn't score, but the defense was unbelievable. They won fifteen to eight. What? They scored fifteen That's points. Stuff. Yeah, fifteen to wow. eight. They played two wow. tw two twenty minute halves. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's what's up. I, I told no, so so I said this when I came in a little bit ago, right? I've been gone for a minute, you know. Things had me in other places, <laughs> other things, but guess what? I'm back. I came in hot early this morning, so you know what I'm saying. And my man Nick G had been holding me down. Soul finger been holding me down. Uncle oh, Fisher Fork been holding me down. And I gotta send a shout out to my young fella Duke. Duke always keep me honest. You know what I'm saying? Because every once in a while, I have a tendency to go off on a tangent. But Duke, you need to, Duke, you need to stop being Duke. Need to stop being an RJ hater, bro. <laughs> that's funny. So, so I know, I know that that's that's one of those live hand grenades that feels like just rolling the room, pull the pin, and walk out, right? Because Duke, Duke oh. is the biggest RJ lover in in the world. Duke loves RJ like I I love Hope. I know that for a fact. Uh, yeah, he he probably like the third. He probably like the third best, you know, RJ lover. Okay. But 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 like I've been saying since day one, bro. I've been saying this for since when did RJ get drafted? Twenty nineteen. So yeah, twenty nineteen. I've been saying this since like twenty sixteen, bro. I've been saying RJ Barrett name since oh since he was a a rising junior in high school, yeah. right? That that the Knicks need to trade Joe Kim Noah and tank for RJ Barrett. I said well, it when I, I think I think I think yeah. Nick G might have been. I know I know Legion and Knicks was there, and I know mm -hmm. who's Mark was there because who's Mark when he heard me say it? Who's Mark lost his mind, bro? Like who was RJ Barrett? You but know you know you know something, Freezy. I've I've, I've always liked RJ, and I, I I got you know I couldn't understand all this all the I'm gonna use a Stephen A word the the vitriol and all the hate. That came down on RJ, man, because you let you listen to ESPN. Whoa, we didn't get the number one pick. All right, man, but RJ's no scrub, bro. And if you right. look at how he's projected, he's improved. Not, I mean, he's improved since he's been in the league. Who I would mean, you, did, who would you say had a better career so far, John Morant or RJ Barrett? Um, I think Morant. Morant. Because I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I what. can't. I can't even say that from literally two years. Two years. Oh, oh, right. oh, Nothing oh, even happened. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So that's the only question. So this is what y'all don't understand, right? You have to listen to to the question that we asked. Oh no, we heard the question. But, but you okay. I, I, I'm, I'm explaining it to you. I'm I'm I'm, I'm explaining to you, Lucy. This is this is where we go, right? So John Morant 
because he is now the face of the franchise. He's going to get all the hype, all the publicity on whatever goes on for his team. That's his role, right? Whereas R.J. Barrett does not get the same because he plays on the team with a Julius Randle. Hence why he doesn't get the accolades that he deserves when we're talking about all rookie NBA. We'll be talking about all these other things that these other players are, are being delved out to just because they show up. So RJ feels slighted, which he should, right? And I'm glad he feels that way because that tells me at the end of the day, come this season, RJ is looking to take names. He, he like like I got my black book. RJ got a book. He gonna put people on notice. I'm telling you right now. Hide and what y'all don't understand what's going on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Turn your computers off right now because y'all don't know what's going on. Turn them off. Turn them off. Ja, wow. ja, ja Morant is better right now. Yeah. But I just I just don't like people try to make it as if it's like insanely like above RJ. I mean he's better. But I mean, accolades wise, I don't, I don't even care. But, like, but, no, G, but G has Man was, but G Man was right. See, that's what I'm saying. See, I asked a specific question, and and I think the question was taken out of context. I didn't say, I didn't ask who was better. You said who so has I, the better career, but I, who I had, said who had the best. Yeah, who had the better? Yeah, I don't think you could really far. answer that after like two years because nothing. Like, I mean, they both made the playoffs once and lost four to one. <laughs> Right. So, right. well, I can't is, even say exactly. Well, exactly. well, Jaws team was a playoff playing team, right? Yeah. Yep. We were not. We were Jamar, Jamar Jamar Rant's team. team was a playing team, right. and and um, John Morant was the primary ball handler, chief rocker of the party for Memphis. R.J. Barrett was not. R.J. Barrett was was a contributor, and and you know his team was the fourth seed in the East. And and by the way, RJ Barrett plays in a conference with the current NBA champ. Say that again. You, you know what I'm saying? And and so and so if you look at if you look at it in, in a sense where if RJ Barrett was able to take as many shots as John Morant, John, I think um, RJ Barrett takes what 14 shots a game, and John Morant takes where was it? Okay. But no. Freezy, John Morant is more explosive, though. Yeah, yeah. Right? He has to be, because that's the role he plays on his team, whereas right. John Morant doesn't have a Julius Randle. Yeah. John Morant is averaging 18 and 7 a game nice. for his career. RJ's averaging 16 and 2 a game for the career, for his career. 16 like, and 2? What do you mean? 16 and 2, yeah. 16, for what? Oh, sorry. Yeah, 16 and 2 assists. Oh, Five assists? Reasons. Oh. <laughs> Five rebounds, <laughs> and yeah, they're, they're playing different positions as well. Like it's not like it's not clear cut yet, but John Morant has definitely made more of a impact in the league. I, I was about to ask you that, Mo. I was about to ask who is more so to to Freeze's point. My question would be, who is the more impactful player for the organization? Morant, yeah, exactly. you, you, you stick John on your team, like. That point guard is going to take you higher than RJ's. It's Morant right now. You know, really? Exactly. That's RJ, the if moment. Stay, if Just for the moment. If you, put Morant, if you put Morant on a team, then you get a playing bubble team. I really, I think it depends. Just because I'm gonna be their team. If you look at the at the Grizzlies, they have a really deep team. They have a talented team. Even when he was out, they won like seven games without him. They have a really talented team. Jaron Jackson was out the whole time. But it's like a point guard is more important to a team than a shooting guard. They both contribute in different ways because the point guard is usually the leader. So that that's where Ja, ja is a better finisher. He's a better playmaker. And he's a better and- three-point shooter, right? No, that's the thing. He's a better finisher and a better playmaker. Yeah. Not three-point oh, shooter. I would say, um, but I got RJ on shooting, rebounding, and defense. Yes. So they both are kind of counter opposites of each other. That's why you can't like truly like. Compare. Ja is better than RJ, but I don't think it's like crazy. 
like a crazy amount. I think I think RJ will have the better career. I don't know if he'll be better. I think they'll be. I, I think they're both gonna be good. Like I don't I don't really even care about him being like too much better than Ja. I think I think they're both gonna be really good. Yeah. Right. Right. I so, agree. So so, so <laughs> and so the point that I was getting at is 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 no matter who, no matter what we say about RJ Barrett there is always going to be a majority that's going to walk to the other side of the argument when it comes to rj barrett yeah right yeah. So, so when you say rj you could say rj barrett is steak and people will walk to the other side to get chicken just so they won't be on the other side of, of rj barrett in my opinion I, I i'm not for sure why that why that is people would rather get chicken instead of steak if it means staying on the side of steak with rj barrett you want me to tell you why, Freezy? Okay. Do, do you want me to be the, the so again to Jay Boogie's point? I watched the versus battle last night, right? I watched Cool Modi. Yes. Go KRS One and Big Daddy Kane. KRS One. Yes. Uh, uh, I was just gonna mention that Kane oh. and KRS One are crazy, bro. Oh my god! I'm like they still dude, got it. They're the best right now. Listen, them. I'm sitting here watching. Uh, Kumo D with, with, with 120 beats per minute. Kumo D. <laughs> Kumo D. He's spitting. He's spitting. Yeah. Oh, my God. oh my God. And then you got you got Chris to come back. And he, turns all the, he turns all the music on. He he tells he tells he tells uh my man um um DJ 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 and I know who it is. Why am I having a, a blank right now? Who was who was uh Carrots was DJ? Kid Capri. Kid Capri. 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 He, he, he told Capri, cut the music off. Yeah. Cut it all off. And then he just went a cappella. And then he started dropping birds and now. Yeah. Oh my like, god. Oh, Yo, so my... he hasn't lost anything. Nothing. He hasn't lost Nothing. anything. Anything. I'm like, oh my god. And then he, he... bought Mad Lion on too. What no? I Mad was Lion, look. that's my guy. I was up in here. I'm telling you right you now. You guys got to watch that. All of you guys got to see that. If you have not seen the versus battle last night, go back and I'm telling you, you watch the whole thing. You, you will not that. be disappointed. I'm definitely going to check it Big out. Big Daddy came with the nice hat on. Oh, he had the, 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 the door on? Oh, the door. oh yeah. Boy, look, hey, I'm, I have I'm, that same hat too, by the way. Boy, look, yeah, look I'm, I'm telling you right now. Yo, he's who's not downplaying RJ? Fabian Williams, I'm not downplaying RJ. <laughs> no. RJ yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no one was downplaying RJ. Yeah, so, RJ so, is so, 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 it seems like it though. So, so one of the one of the things crazy, there's right? no way you could say that. <laughs> that. That what that people don't play downplay RJ? No, I'm saying that we downplayed him there. I, I didn't, I didn't no. Say, no, I didn't say no. I didn't say you I didn't say you did, bro. I'm so, just saying so, in, so, in general, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, G man. No, in general, yeah, even yeah, Knicks yeah. fans don't play him yet, but so okay, I'm so, okay, time out, time out, guys. This this is what we're gonna do. This, this is what we're gonna do. This, this is why y'all miss G Man when I was away. This is why. Because I'm I'm about to shut all this down. The right screaming now. and shouting, yeah, and yeah. Beef with cat, yes, cat. Yes. yeah, all that, all that, that that's why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Other than the fact that I'm about to get up in y'all in fantasy football. That's about to happen too. But anyway, we that's a whole other subject. Check this out. When we talk about RJ Barrett, you're gonna have people that love RJ and you're gonna have people that hate RJ. I have been on record with my man Duke down here in the lower quadrant of, of, of the panel, right? And he called me out a couple times and he called me an RJ hater. Yo, I just want you guys to know that this this is the guy that said like after last season ended that RJ is not a starter in his eyes. I said that. I did say that. Yeah, he said that. No, he, he was did. sticking I with said that. And I was like for a minute. I no, was serious. And I don't know how that was like because RJ would start. RJ would mainly listen, start on every single. Listen season, to me. Maybe. Listen to me. Listen to at me. At the end of last season, G Man. At the end of last season, listen, or his rookie. Okay. Or his rookie season. No, this season. Literally after the the playoffs. No, and no, everything, no. no at, after the playoffs. After the playoffs, right? After so, the eighteen point season. Listen to me. Listen, Lucy. Lucy, listen. What we have to figure out is this, right? Everyone has a role to play. They understand what their position is, and you have to be the person that is efficient at that position. Last year, are you telling me right now that RJ Barrett was 100% proficient at his position? Tell me that. That doesn't mean that he's, that doesn't mean that he's not a starter. Duke, 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 Duke. 
Don't change it. Don't change the, the, the subject matter, right? The question is, was R.J. Barrett 100% at his position? That's a yes or no question. Does this, does this, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what you mean by that. But you can't just say this in a vacuum because because if it's this applies across the board, Okay. If it applies across the board, then it's a then it's a Wait, question. Wait, sorry. So you're answer. basically you could ask the same thing about Randall then in the in the playoffs because you basically that's all why I said that. the playoffs. That's why Randall I'm Randall asking. averaged three more points than RJ and RJ Shaw. I can ask the same. So you can't. Thing you can't. You can't any that, player, you can't. I can ask the same thing about any player on the roster, but that's not what I'm doing. What I'm asking you right now is: last season was RJ Barrett 100 percent at his position? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, yeah, I still don't know yes. like what you're trying to get from that. Yes, the, the, the answer, like he was inconsistent. He had inconsistent like spurts sometimes, but other than that, like he was fine. I don't know. Like the, the, the answer what we're, to, the what answer we're talking to that about. question is yes, though, because ahead, because because, because because uh, because R.J. Barrett shot forty four percent from the floor, and the gold <laughs> standard is forty five percent. R.J. Barrett shot forty percent from three. The mm. gold standard is forty percent. Mm. From from three, okay. right? So yeah. so if we go by what the gold standard is, right, right, the gold standard is forty five percent. If you shoot forty five percent from the floor on a high volume of shots, then you're an elite NBA scorer, right? Not fifty percent. Fifty percent is other level generational type stuff that don't happen. And I'm talking about for wing players and guards. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna be on record here because I want to be clear. I don't want no misunderstanding. So Freezy says RJ was 100% last year. Duke says what? Because you wait, you you waffled on me for a minute there. No, said, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't wait for on you. You nobody is 100% at their position. They're gonna have off nights, so you can't really like ask. I don't know what you're trying to like instill from that question. I'll I'm say yes, that. but other than that, I, I don't know. Okay. I want a yes or no. That's all I want. Go ahead. Bro. Go ahead. I say but, yes. But the point, yeah, to, but G man, the, but the point to the question is, this is, you is it the point. The point to the question is this. So if you say, if you say, was R. J. Barrett a certain thing? You have to base it on expectations. The expectation Bruce. for a but, but plus you know, the twenty year old stats don't lie. He right. is one of few players at twenty <coughs> before twenty one that had the stats he had. So right. I, I don't know. Right, so there were only four players to ever do it. Four players to ever do it. LeBron, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Zion, and RJ. G-Man, what are you looking for? What, what do you want? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what yeah, he's this, looking for. This is what I want. This is what I want. I want people to stop putting, un, I guess, uh, un, unattainable aspects on players. Right. What What is the unattainable? I want you to expand on that. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to tell you. Give me a minute. I'm about to tell you, right? So the, the same thing, this is what I understand, right? The same argument that we make for R.J. Barrett, we don't make for my guy. We don't. Yo, stop. We don't. <laughs> Yo, stop it, please. Yes, we, we do. Stop. No, we Yo, no, there's no, no way you just connected that to Obi. Like, that's the that's wildest I mean. thing I've you ever heard. You know how I did that? But, but, but the Obi, that, Obi don't got no moves, bro. I can't. I, and I like Obi. Here, he got no post here, here moves. Go. Here, here he we go. Here <laughs> we go. Shooting out. He's shooting here better. Here we go. Here and he's we playing go. better defense. Here but we... I don't know. What, Wait, tell me how. Tell me what this has to do with Obi. What's that I'm, to do with OB again? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm about to explain it to you yeah. because the expectations that you have for RJ Barrett coming out of the draft are not the same that you have for OB Topper because yeah, someone, well, someone, why would said, you? he was the eighth pick, and he's twenty. I expected him to average like thirteen points right, in the season. Right. Why? 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 Why did you expect that? Why? Why? Because he was dominating in college, and I thought that he would oh actually do good in the NBA. But apparently, he can't post up anyone that's shorter than him now. Bro, why are we know. doing this? I, I don't know why we're doing Nick or Nick violence. Like I don't. Everyone in chat is. I don't know. I don't know. He's the post with the most. <laughs> Obi was the national player of the year, bro. Like, right. What are we talking about, bro? Everyone in chat is also confused about Saw the point you're trying to make. Yo, we two games <laughs> out from the opening, like. Of this season, of where this we going? Season. Like I don't we know. started drinking before twelve. <laughs> <I'm hitting laughs> against RJ. Like what are we doing? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this, right? I'm gonna, Bro, I'm this is this. like RJ already got compared to Kevin Knox before, like a whole argument, like for this multiple is shows, and now we're comparing him to to Obi. Like this is just like yeah. disrespectful. 
Listen, like, I don't. I, I can't deal with this, bro. I don't know, like, how you just be coming up with these comparisons, bro. This, and you also said that Grimes is in his way too earlier before the season started a few weeks ago. What? No, that, that's not what I said. That is I, yo, we caught you in four. I, yo, it, that is not what I said. It's on Guillermo's right. show. It's on Guillermo's show. He's the second player to watch out because Grimes is is coming in his way. Pause. That's what you said. On who show? Guillermo's. I haven't been on Guillermo show in like months. <laughs> so nah, it was it was a while ago. I remember I showed Freezy too. We got we got you in four. Okay, <laughs> let, let, let me let me explain something to you. On Wednesday night, the New York Knicks are playing the Boston Celtics. Right. right. That that that's gonna happen. That's coming. Right. Um. On, on Friday, the twenty second, <laughs> the Knicks play the Orlando Magic, and I may if if work permits, I may actually get to go to that game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Friday, right? Actually, maybe may in the building. You know what I'm saying? I say oh, all the soldiers in the building. I say all that to say this, right? I love you guys. I, I love the, the the banter back and forth. But you, you, nobody on this panel or nobody that's watching this chat will ever question who my favorite player is on the roster right now. That that's never gonna happen, right? Never. But I love each and every player that suits up in the Knicks uniform. I, I support them 110%. The only thing I want you guys to do, the only thing I want you guys to do is think outside the box for like two seconds. Don't get so enamored with what you think is going to happen. Are, are we still really? talking about that OB thing? Like, we don't got to think about outside dude, the box for that, please. Yeah, dude, it's just, dude. That should dude, be a conversation. No, no. I didn't say OB thing. You said OB thing. So let me finish what I gotta say, and then I'm gonna open the panel up to everybody else. So what I'm telling you is this: don't get enamored with what we think is going to be the norm. Because if, as Tib shows you, and again, this is preseason, right? What Tib shows you in preseason is not what you can expect. Who closed the fourth quarter out in the last preseason game? Who was on the court? Kimba was on, wasn't on the court. Fournier was not on the court. Mitchell was not on the court. You know what I'm saying? So don't get enamored with what you think is going to be the norm, right? That, that's not where we are. That's not who we are. So I'm, I am I'm, I'm pleasantly pleased to see that the coaching staff is willing to go outside of what the norm is going to be. Because if you ask me the first preseason game, what the roster would be, I would have told you Kimball Walker, Evan Fournier, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robson, starting five. Yes. So coming off the bench, Derrick Rose, uh, Burks, Quickly, Obi, and, and, and Todd, or Nerd is nowhere. I would still say that. So Don't count on Nerd is nowhere. He's going to be injured the whole year. Yeah. But, but check this out. That's not what we have seen as of yet. That's not Injuries what we got see. in the way, yeah. It, okay, injuries is a part of basketball. What I'm telling you, yeah, no, you that's is, what I'm saying. I'm saying injuries got in the way of that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. Right. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing yeah, with you. Because right. so, Noel is gonna be out for probably a few games because he got like some soreness. Because in the beginning they said it was rest, but now it's he like broke his fingernail. Soreness. That's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like so, well, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> he let it slip off his fingers too many times last season. His nails, his nails got to go. Y'all wild on Monday morning. This this should not be allowed on Monday morning. Y'all wild hey, on Monday morning. Hey, hey but G, G man, hey G man, let me. I gotta ask you this though, because yes, sir. because yes, sir. you and I had a conversation. I, I just want to shift gears real quick away from Obi. Just, just for a few seconds. You and I had a conversation, and it ended with you winning out in the conversation. You basically said. Um, the best ability is availability. Facts, right? You remember? You, you, so, we, and, and the in the context of that, because we were talking, I was talking about why everybody is hating on Mitchell Robinson, like why yep. nobody wants to pay Mitchell Robinson. Remember that? Yep, I remember. So, guess what? What's up? Nerlens Noel got paid, and now he is not playing. Not a bit. Yeah, again, and, and Mitchell Robinson is now playing. And is not getting paid, right? Yeah, and and another thing, like 
I, I'm sorry it's called, but it's also connecting to like Burks. Like people want Sims to play over Noel and Grimes to play over Burks, but we legit just pay these two players. Like, what do you want us to do? Like that that would just make no sense to do that. If they're both healthy to play Grimes over him, and then that you're wasting money. Like you can't you can't do something Ron, like that. This, Ron, this thing tastes like absolutely nothing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that so, looks so bland. That looks like fake chocolate. It, bro, it is. So I'm, I'm trying to. So, so I'm trying to go carb. It looks like free, right? on a stick, bro. And it yeah, tastes nah, that like looks it. bad. And it tastes like it. It tastes Yo, like bro. I stuck a stick in a diaper and just. Uh, <laughs> no, bro, no. <laughs> and you just lick it right. Yeah, no. <laughs> you oh, right. it. When you do zero carbs, you'll eat anything, bro. Yes, I, zero I, carbs, I knew anything. something was up, man. I knew something no, was up because I see you. No. I see you take a look at it after you. <laughs> I was like, hey, bro, you know. He's like, should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Bro, 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 when when you do just so, rip it, so, freezy, rip it. So I'm on it. So I'm on a diet, bro. I'm trying to lose some. So so for those that don't know, so I'm a former boxer that's wanting to get back in the ring. So I want to box again, right? But I got to get in shape in order to to get back to cracking, right? The only thing about it is is I want to get down get down about seventy more pounds so that I can be competitive, yeah. right? So the thing about yes, it sir. though, the thing about it though is. Carbs. Yeah. So, so, so. The thing, the thing about it is, is for breakfast I eat eggs and bacon, and then, <laughs> and, then and, and then, and then sometimes, sometimes I mix it up and eat bacon and eggs every see, day. See, Yo, see, your you farts go gotta whites, be crimson, bro. Whites. Your farts gotta be like killer, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Miss Booker punching you in your neck right now. Mm. Bro, I buy I buy two cans of Febreze every week. <laughs> Yo, <Trust> bro. Me. <laughs> Trust me, bro. Yes, no, yes. Bro. Well, you gotta go to the arena and just use that as a weapon against the other team. <laughs> man. Oh, man. Like, like 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 a street fighter, right? Yo, Yo go bro. ahead and do that. We need we need every advantage we can get. Oh fire. Oh fire. Hey. Get get you some strawberries and 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 uh, some blueberries or something. Yeah, cause that yeah, right there, that's that's not enough. That that's too much carbs. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Those, those all carbs, meat, bro. That's pretty much all you, you need. Some doing. good old oatmeal. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. bro. I'm telling you, it's it's crazy. So so yeah, hey man. So do you eat salmon this? or fish? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Not fried though. Not yeah, fried. yeah. Just bake it. <laughs> they they said like, Uncle Stinky. Oh, boy. <laughs> exactly, Mo. Exactly, Mo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yo, I think concert wow. released the secret weapon. <laughs> right. I, oh, I, and, and, you know, I've been releasing it and not even on purpose. So like, Ooh, oops, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> you stress farting, bro. Yeah, no, 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 Dick G. I'm backfiring. <laughs> Backfire. Oh my god. Yo. You know what right now? Mo, yeah, I'm, 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 gonna be the first man to rock in it. <laughs> right. My own fuel, this. bro. Uh, I'm generating my own fuel. Hey, Sarge is dropping grenades. Yeah. Well, no. he, he, dropping, he dropping nuclear bombs right there. Right. Yeah. Hey, I was in the farmer's market, bro. I was in the farmer's market and I crop dusted a whole group of old ladies. See? This is what I'm talking about, I was, I was trying not to, bro. I was trying not to. I was trying to tiptoe away, but I crop dusted the whole... All this, the, the old ladies oh, was like... <laughs> Do you smell what the crazy is cooking? <laughs> This is what I'm talking about right now. This this makes no. Oh my god! Uh, but but oh, it, here's to your health. Oh my god! Oh, Cheers, man. bro. Oh my goodness, bro. This, this this is why you have to be cautious when Uncle Freezy enters this building. This is why. This is exactly why you crap dusted a whole bunch of old women. Yes. And you know I, I've been there because we we all done this right. We've been on these aisles in Walmart, <laughs> Publix, or whatever your favorite grocery store is, right? And you got that that feeling that the guts start bubbling up, and you like, "Ooh, I can't hold this!" And you you let one go, and you walk off, and then you look back. You gotta look back. Right? You gotta look you gotta back. Look back. You gotta look back. You, gotta look back. you always and gotta look like, back at the victim. Yeah, and we're like, "Oh my God, what, 
what what is that <laughs> bro when bro. the victims walk into when they walk into something the and, and you're like <laughs> Bro. bro, the other day, some kid did it on an elevator and just hopped off, man. Like, bro. <laughs> and his parents was like, wow. he farted. He farted. <laughs> just like, you know, kids being kids. He farted. Yeah, what, what can you do? Mm-mm-mm. What can you do? Look, <clears throat> the, the thing is, right, the, the thing is this. If it's loud and people expect it, that's no fun. Them silent ones that you oh. just like ooze out. Just the deadly assassin. Ooh, ooh. It's like. Wait, why are we even? Why are you even going into detail in this? I'm so confused. You're getting a little too into character with. I'm just saying. The silent ones is the ones that get you, and you just walk away. You just watch people look. Look at the look on their face. They be standing there looking for birthday cards. Or, or Valentine's Day cards, and then all of a sudden they'd be like, "Right, yo, Freezy, bro, something, man, come on, what is this? What are we doing?" Yo, yeah, Freezy looked oh, disappointed. That, in that's life. like the type of ice cream like people, like old people, eat when they don't got their Ooh. teeth in anymore. Hey, bro, Freezy, <laughs> just called you old. I don't know if you caught that or not, but he just called you old. Yeah, I no, ain't. no, I'm just saying that's the type that that uh, you eat with no teeth. I know this, this kind. Of, this conversation just got sideways fast, bro. Real quick. Real quick. Sideways, hey, but, but check this out. is hard, bro. Check this yeah, out. It is. No, Wednesday, crazy. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. I don't know if you guys got NBA League Pass or whatever the case may be. in the building. Oh, it, it's you going to the game. You going to be in the building, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Pretty, Pretty. My, with my boys. Me and my boys are going to be in the building. It's going to be lit. Crazy. Man, you gotta live stream it, man. But what, what, yeah, what, what, yeah, what, I know so hey, many people that are going to that game. Like the a, first game. Know, Everyone right. going to that. What what what, what you doing on on uh on, on Wednesday, Freezy? This right here. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so 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 I'll be on. I'll be on for the the. So you done? Yeah, I'll do the next morning drive probably for a couple of hours and then jump off so I can get some rest and then jump right back on. Um, later on, and then do freezy time, do the game, and then you know what I'm saying rock and roll up. So, so, so what, 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 what I, what I would commit to right now is when freezy jumps on for freezy time, it's gonna be freezy and G man time. That's what it's gonna be. That's what it's gonna be. Yeah. That, and, 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 and if 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 someone in the building right now is is uh, willing and uh, I'll be there. No, well, hold on. So Danny, I have no, I have no doubt of your loyalty and and your participation. But the person I'm talking to right now just stepped into the room. So uh, that that oh, dude, yeah. what you what you invited me to? Bow tie, gi, and, 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 and the fly yellow with with the bow tie. Hey, Wednesday, check this out. We doing freezy time. What time freezy? What time are we gonna start? Um, probably seven twenty-five, something like that. Okay, so we doing freezy time. We gonna call the game. Uh, the, the first game of the season. And, and if you got time, I know you're a busy man. Yeah, my schedule, unfortunately, I, I, my game day schedule, if I've already signed a game day contract, the uh, Blanche Tears Network wasn't offering enough. Um, yeah. So my talent <laughs> is going <laughs> away on game day. Um, so I'm doing well. I'm why he dressed up so good, man. No, I'm taking my listen, talents to South Beach. Listen, listen. <laughs> but I am here this morning. Um, great show. Um, I'm, I'm glad I was able to participate this morning, set the pace a little bit. But I, I am transparent. I got an issue. I got a serious. Issue? I got a serious issue with Charlie Ward's cousin. I've always had one, but I've left it alone. Okay. Um, this panel ain't for everybody, and I ain't coming up here for everybody. If you can't control your emotions, if you can't be intelligent with your takes, and not allow us to watch you wash the commodes, you. You're probably somebody that I can deal with. But if you right. if I gotta see you watch the commodes, you can't keep your cool and you don't come with talent to takes, I'm not joining the panel with you. So I'm just, you know, I let the Blonde Tears Network do what they need to do from there. Right, right. I lose my I lose my cool a lot. Boom. 
Well, uh, whatever you guys do on Wednesday night, uh, I'm going to be at the game. So, But when I come back home, I'm definitely going to tune in. So I'll support as usual. I don't like how y'all showing off, though. Like, yeah, yeah man. we got to. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got to. So, yeah, you're flexing so, hard over there. Like. So, so I, I feel like I'm in a unique um, um, moment here to do something that no one else can do right now. And I feel a little special. You so, give out free tickets? No, I'm not. That, nothing okay. is free in America. Nothing is free in America. I'm I'm I'm, I'm putting that out there right now because I got to get up and go to work every day. I'm at work you know right what's now. Free? It's free to drop a like and subscribe. Bam. That's what Definitely I can say. Bam. Bam. Also, Duke be on it. Duke be on it. Yeah, but I got I'm no free. sleep, but I somehow feel awake. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you also hit that like button, you're burning calories too. So you, you get yeah, calories. for sure. Yeah, you, know, you you ain't got to eat that nasty truck that you eat right now. It don't cost you nothing, bro. It Yo, if we get to hundred likes, a hundred push-ups from Freezy, I call it. Oh, yeah. Bam. Yeah. Oh, 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 hundred oh. likes, hundred push-ups. Let's go, Freezy. On camera. Right. This, this, this is what I'm gonna say, Freezy. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to give you some uh, insight, uh, insider aspect as to the Knicks versus uh, the Magic on Friday. Oh, Jaron Jackson just got his contract. Let me see if How I much? Can. Yeah, everyone, 105 million for four years. Dude, he hasn't been healthy. Oh my God! All right. Yeah, nah. so I'm not gonna lie though. I think he's gonna be nasty million? this season though. 26 million a year? That's not bad. I mean, he, he's he's definitely worth the money. When he's no out, injuries, though. But he's never Bro, out he there. doesn't even rebound. Like, <laughs> no, no. But he's he's a good player. We can't. The problem no, with good. him is we we don't we haven't seen enough of him for us I, to even see his whole game. He's never out there. I'm not know, gonna man. lie. If he's healthy, he could be a sneak for M MIP. I, he could be a sneak. I agree. I think sneak, he's, I think he's really talented. MIP a sneak for, for what? MIP. Oh, okay, okay. Most improved. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's really on. Like he's been injured so long, but he has really good like offensive skills. I thought you said. I thought you were saying MVP. I was gonna. What? Oh no. Nah. Okay. I think Giannis and Curry getting there. I think Giannis and Curry. Let's go. Plus he blocks shots. He's he's a terror. So so let let's talk about something that's important. Like, what seats y'all got for the game? Uh, I'm in the hundreds, somewhere in the hundreds. Yeah, One thirteen. Like I think those I'm, prices went up. I, I was checking tickets. They like two fifty for the hundred row seats now. Yeah, <laughs> the hundred yeah. section. I'm definitely gonna go to like probably like two games this season. But yo, they wild. I gotta go to a good game though. I'm not just going to a wet game. Yeah, well, um, we yeah, ain't I famous see a over here. Match. We ain't famous over here. It's still Knicks fans yet. So uh, <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah. We, we we in the two. We somewhere in between two twenty and two twenty eight. I'll be I'll be with the nothing but Knicks crew. That's oh, okay. That's, that's, I, I, I love the middle of the court. Like you get to see both sides of the court. That's my favorite spot. I got to sit under the basket. I'm, I'm special. I got to be under the basket. <laughs> Freezy is struggling with that fake fudge bar. Well, look, Freezy. Put <laughs> that thing down. Yeah, our, <laughs> put it down. What are you doing? Don't just, do it. Nah, he got it. He got take it. a bite or just let it go. Yeah, yeah, nah, let it keep go. going, Freeze. freeze. Yeah, no. bro, bro. Pounds, bro. bro, this thing takes stamina, bro. Let it go. <laughs> hey, you Peter. probably burning calories while eating that. <laughs> yes. Listen, let, let it go. Go get you some turkey bacon and some egg whites and call it a day. Hey, G Man. Hey, G Man. And this green screen is green for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got oh, it. Okay. Y'all <laughs> killing me this morning, bro. Y'all are killing me. Hey, but check this out, fellas. Hey, check this out. Um, I gotta go and do what pays the bills for real. For real, for real. Um, I got right. some conference calls I gotta get on. But right. I'm gonna tell you this right here. I'm gonna jump in the pilot seat then. Th there you go. I'm gonna tell you this. It's it's how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I'm telling you, I miss you, brothers. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad to be back, and I will not let this go unanswered because, you know, when I'm not here, people tend to get a little uh, uh, free with the tongue. 
You know what I'm saying? They get the, 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 the flapping and, 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 and this is that going on. I'm trapped. I'm back. I'm back. And you will be held accountable. You got MJ's letter all around that, bro. Understand. Understand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Hey, check this out. I, I, I appreciate each and every one of you gentlemen. You know, salute, 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 salute to my man, Uncle Freezy, to my man, Nick G, to my man, Mo. Mo, Mo, you know you my guy, right? You know that. You know that. <laughs> and, 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 and Ron, hey, Soul Finger, listen, I need for everybody to come back on Wednesday. Because Wednesday, if you, so, unless you had the gate, so I'm not fortunate enough to be able to be in the Mecca, right? I, that, that's not how I roll. I don't, I, I'm rolling like that. But if you are not in the Mecca, come back. And 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 join us on, on 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 Wednesday night, right? So we can all enjoy this victory that the Knicks are about to get on these Celtics Wednesday yep. night. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hey, so. we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk some OB. No, you know what? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna go on a limb right now, right? I'm gonna go on a limb right now. I'm not gonna mention OB Topic's name the whole broadcast. On Wednesday night. How about that? I don't. I don't think you're gonna be. Able I to don't do think that. you can do it, uh, I, G man. I love you to pieces, but I, I you, you gonna have a slip of the tongue because something gonna happen. Let him have a dunk, and you're gonna be like, Obi. No. What I'm gonna say is, <laughs> or oh, oh, even if he gets her, he gets her rebound. Nope. I'm gonna say, oh, great play. I'm not gonna mention the man's name. I'm telling you, you can't avoid it, man. You can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. I'm not gonna lie, bro. You're definitely gonna forget about it. You gonna forget yeah, about it, G, G man? Yeah, G man. Challenge, challenge accepted. G man, I'm trying to look. I'm I'm trying to look out for you, man. I'm trying to help you now. Yeah, yeah. Let's just yeah. Let's let's table let's table that one, man. No that's one can awesome. remind him either because that's just yeah. You gotta you gotta remember that on your own. I fell in love, but I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. When I set my mind to something, it's gonna happen. Obi Toppin's name would not come out of my mouth when he's in that. Period. Okay. Period. But so, 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 this is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. If you want to see where I pass or I fail, guess what you got to do? You got to tune in. You got to tune in to see what's going on. You, you got to have that in. notification bell. Hit that, right. look, hit, that, hit that like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when Uncle Freeze goes live. You don't want to miss this. Look, okay. no, we're giving this to you right now in the morning for free. That don't happen often. This is for free. I'm right. telling you. Hit that like, right. subscribe, and that notification bell. Freezy, as always, my brother, I Sir. appreciate you having me on. Yeah, you know, it's your joint, bro. All, 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 all my, all my brethren, much love. You know what I'm saying? Tell. So, right, okay. Salute, salute. All right, bro. Peace. Peace out. All right. So what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do is, since I have all y'all together, man, I really wanted to do, really wanted to get into some of these, some of our season predictions, right? And and not just basic predictions, right? But but things that we feel like legit can happen, but 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 not basic stuff, right? Like so so for instance, I'm interested in getting Nick G's predictions on who the rookie breakout player is going to be, right? Last year we thought it was going to be Obi, and it wound up being quickly, right? And, and for instance, I want to get get Duke's um um opinion on who the most improved nick is going to be right last year you know last season we thought it was probably going to be rj and they wound up being julius and the league agreed because they gave julius the most improved player award right so i want to get some predictions on on some of those things so that we can have kind of have something to look forward to during the season so that we can kind of track it a little bit right you know, mm -hmm. um, Mo, I know you didn't, Mo and Soulfinger, I know y'all ain't really get a chance to chop it up like, like y'all been wanting to. So, and, and Ron, so now may be the time for all of us to have, you know what I'm saying, um, 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 a more of a round robin conversation so that we can talk about, you know, what we expect from this season, right? right. Um, let me, let me ask y'all first, let me ask y'all this, um, this is something I've been thinking about all night, 
right? Do y'all believe that Tibbs' style will burn out this roster? Will burn out the players? Like this, went to every game is every, all 82 games are game seven? Do you think that style will burn out the players? Nah, I really don't think so. Because, like, we, we deep. We, like, I think we're really 15 deep. I wouldn't be uncomfortable playing Wayne Selden. Like, I feel like he's like a guy who could probably hit a shot in the game and play a little bit of defense. Like, so like, I, I, I like one to 15, I don't feel uncomfortable putting guys on the court. So I don't, I don't think like we've got a lot of veteran guys at the guard spots, right? Right. Kemba Walker, Derek Rose. That's those, those, that's our main concern, right? Right. But even if those guys go down, like, we won't be as good as we want to be, but we still have Alec Burks. We still have Emmanuel Quickly. We still have Deuce McBride. We don't know what Deuce is going to be. But, like, we, we – st- and I, and, I'm, and we're always going to have Julius as, as a ball handler. So I feel like we're always going to have an engine running our team somehow, you know? So. How do you feel about – how do you feel about Grimes? I mean, I'm not Grimes, but McBride. I mean, like, I, I got to see more of him. I haven't, I haven't seen him – like really play, right. and like I need to see him like be able to create on an NBA floor to be able to know like how, like how I could actually feel about him. But I'm you know I'm excited that he's a defender. Like I'm, that's for that's for sure. I'm I'm excited that I could like throw him on you know on a guy and just like let him play defense you know as hard defense as possible you know like full court. So right. that's how I feel about that. Right I, I, and. My um, hey Ron, and I've been I wanted to, I'm interested in your, your take on 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 McBride also. Uh, my take on on um McBride is that I don't think he's an NBA point guard yet offensively, right? Defensively, we know defensively we know what he is, right? Offensively, I just don't think he is a initiator. But I may be missing something, right? Right. Um, so, what's your take on 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 Miles McBride? Well, <clears throat> I've got uh, this. This Nick team is uh, I have my favorites. You know, RJ is my favorite player, um, and Obi's uh, my second uh, favorite player, and third would be uh, McBride. I like Grimes too a lot, but. Uh, McBride is, you know, watching that summer league and seeing what he could do on the defensive end. I was more surprised by his three-point shooting in the summer league, to be honest, because I'm not expecting a lot of offensive, um, you know, action from him. I know he can do certain things, but consistently, I don't know yet, because that's going to come with his um, getting his NBA legs and stuff. But I think when we look at um, Deuce, we got to look at him, you know, the comparison for a while has been Marcus Smart. That's what he looks like to a lot of us. But I think right. it's a lot more real than just the comparison on, on the defensive end. I think on the offensive end, it's the same thing. When Marcus Smart first came into the league, he wasn't a good offensive player. I mean, right. he would hit a three here and there, but he definitely wasn't consistent. He's a little better at hitting a three. He's still not that consistent. He's just not a great shooter. Um, right. But he can score a little bit. He has his moments where he gets to the rack, gets to the foul line, does a couple things to help the team. And I think that's where Deuce is right now. I think Deuce, um, his his ceiling is going to be better than what Marcus Smart is offensively, but he just got to get there. Right now, the game is just too fast for him, and and plus, he, you know, he's got that rookie thing right now, trying to get into Tibbs' good graces, know where to be, know what Tibbs wants, right. and he's just not there yet. That's that's going to come with time, but I definitely think, given the chance. Um, we could see something special from him. We will definitely see him affect the game on the defensive end. He just needs the minutes. And unfortunately, he's in the same boat where um, where Obi and uh, Quickly were last year. He's going to oh. have to, you know, wait until that, that opportunity presents itself, if it does, which I think it will. Unfortunately, listen, we got to be honest, you know, when you got older uh, point guards like Rose and Ken, but there's going to be some nights off where they can't play. It's a night of rest or maybe even some injury. So certain spots are going to open up. And, and I guess that's when we'll get a chance to see if he can step up. But he needs minutes to to, to grow. So we'll see. All right. So what do you think, Saul Fender? 
Um, Ron pretty much, you know, he didn't leave me much meat on the bone with his take when he came at it. But um, and he never does, it. bro. And he never does because I, I watch him on other stuff, bro. <laughs> and, and, and that's not a bad thing, really. No, you know, no, it's not. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a dollar out of fifteen cent. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna make a dollar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a dollar out of fifteen cent. Right. That being said. I do agree with him regarding Deuce. Um, I like Deuce. I do. And I, I, I got favorites and everything as well. Um, I'm an RJ guy as well, like RJ. Regarding with Deuce, um, Deuce, like, like I say, he, he does get compared to Smart. Smart's defense probably at that stage is better, while Deuce's offense is better than what Smart's was at that time. Right. So. Smart is in a a, a real unique position because he's it's no rush to get him on the floor. So and I really don't, you know, I was thinking, yeah, he's gonna get some time, he's gonna get some time. But seeing how the rotation and everything has been going, I don't think he's gonna get a lot of burn this year. Seriously. Simple okay. fact. Um <coughs> you got Burks that can handle ball handling duties. We, you see the push, the big push for IQ, the real big push for IQ to get more handling as a point guard. And, you know, we're going to have our bumps in the road with IQ making that transition more as an NBA point guard, more so, you know, or uh, then more so than being just a combo guard. Um, with Kimba, Kimba and Derrick Rose, we, it's, it's, uh, it's quite evident we're going to have guys, we're well, not just with those two, but we're going to have guys going to get some rest throughout the season. I can see it. Uh, Tibbs already kind of gave us a sneak peek of that during preseason. Cause I really don't see him running guys all night. Um, Dag on uh, Taj, Taj won't be out there like that uh, often, man. Because like I said, I do. I, I gotta admit what G Man said. If we gotta depend solely on Taj getting a lot of time, we're gonna have problems. Right. And I like Taj. Uh, I I love Taj. That's the intangible man. He brings a lot of things to the table that you can't put on stat sheets. You just mm -hmm. have to see what he does. Um, okay. He's basically our Udonis Haslam. Yep. Um, Grimes, out of our young rookies, um, well, first of all, um, when it comes to national media and things of that nature, I really don't see our rookies getting that kind of push because the position they're in. They're not going to get a lot, a lot of time. All of them will pretty much get the um, the OB treatment to an extent. It's just, it just depends on the different on the different player. Um, OB was more of a project with certain things, and he's come along. The difference with the um, – I still think Sims is going to get more time in the G League. You know, it was quite evident from uh, the way he played. He, he, he's he's a project. Uh, okay. Athletic freak, but I, and I like him. He's a he's a, he's a a project. The, the main thing about it is you got to get him to be able to talk. You can't be an introvert and be on the court. It's not going to work. Because if that cat can't <clears throat> open up and sound off, he's going to wind up finding himself out the league somewhere else. It's right. you know just off that alone. So, right. um, but our rookies won't get that kind of push. They won't get that pub because of the like I said, the unique position they're in. They'll get they'll be uh, situational. They're gonna have situational duties, i.e., what we saw with with Grimes. That was situational. Right. And 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 I don't think that Tiz was desperate. He just situation. You know, Grimes, and and it goes back to practice. Practice is a war. They got them in there. They they end up fighting, you know, um, you know, chairs, bats, whatever you want to say when it comes to their practice. Practice is intense, and the harder you practice, and what you show in practice can get you that time on the floor. It's just that with Burks being out, it opened the door for Grimes. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, um, I just thought of something when um, when Soulfinger was speaking. I know in the past I compared um, Jericho to Dwight Howard, but another another uh, looking in, into the to the eyes of that whole comparison is um, if you remember when uh, Dwight Howard first came into the league, yeah, he was getting his points and he was um, sort of dominant in certain ways, but he was quiet too. He wasn't talking a lot on the court, and he used to go back and forth with Shaq because Shaq was always getting on him about not stepping up and, and really if you want the S on your chest, you gotta become a a, a, a more vocal player. You gotta get more aggressive and do certain things. So there's the similarities between him and Jericho are definitely they're evident. Okay. 
Okay. So, so I think our season is going to be one where there are going to be a lot of surprises, I think. Right. And some of them are going to be good and some of them are going to be bad. Right. Like, like, like we may have expectations on a certain play to be a certain thing and he may not turn out to be that thing. Like, like Evan Fournier has been so far this preseason. Like we thought we were getting Mr. Consistency on offense, you know what I'm saying? And he and his shots not there so far. Right. Everything else is there. Everything about just about everything else you expected is there except for what, what you thought would be the main thing that would be there. Evan Forney, basic in my mind, I was like, Evan Forney is gonna get 16 points some kind of way every game. And that hadn't been there yet. So yeah, so that's a surprise to me. I think a, a, I think a major surprise though. Um, I think it's a major surprise is I think one of these rookies is gonna pop. I I don't know if it's gonna be Grimes, or if it's gonna be Sims, or if it's gonna be McBride. But history tells us that that Tibbs likes to grab a young guy and nurture them. You know what I'm saying? Not all the young guys, because because in Chicago, he picked Jimmy Butler over Tony Snell. You remember Tony Snell? Oh yeah. He picked he picked Jimmy Butler over Tony Snell, and he nurtured Jimmy Jimmy Butler. And t- Tony Snell wound up being role player. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, Freezy, you know, I didn't bring him up, but um, because he's not with us right now, he's overseas. Rokas is another one that could possibly be. be could pop the stash, you know, the draft and stash we got. Oh, that's my favorite rookie. Oh, that's my favorite rookie. Bro. Yeah, I like him too. So we we made, made we really made good. I just this season I don't see our rookies on a national spotlight on the national scene making much of a, a impact. We know we know what we have, but outside of us, you know what I mean. I don't see that happening. But I do in time. I do believe one. I'm 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 even willing to go out and say two two of our rookies gonna pop two of those young cats gonna pop. I'm willing to say two. Right. Man, man, child saying that he's worried about Kemba more than uh, Fournier, and I agree with him. Kemba, I know I know we knew that he's he was like a defensive liability, but I really think teams are gonna take advantage of that. Like just just seeing the way that Raul Neto was just like just. <laughs> Taking him looking like an all star, looking like an all star. Basically, <laughs> like, I was like, "How do you hide that? How do you hide that on the basketball court?" Even with a guy like Mitchell Robinson, even if you know R.J. Barrett, you know, plays all team, all NBA defense, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. It's a team right. effort, and like, and I think in order to, for Kemba to offset it, he has to score at a great rate. And I, don't, I don't know if he, we'll see what those knees are looking like. But thank just... you, thank you, Mo, for that because that's what I was saying. His offense would translate, would help the the to compensate for the defense. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what he's going to. He's going to have to put so much pressure on whoever's on him. Right. But again, um, I don't see him doing it in, night in night out because I'm keeping the I'm keeping the 100. He's not going to play. Uh, uh, He's not going to play the entire season, and he's going to have not only games that he's going to sit out, but he's going to have games where those where he's that arthritis and his knees going to flare up. Yeah. And if anybody's ever had any any form of arthritis or knows what it is, and you get it in your joints, man, it's it's, it's not a good thing. It's it's it's, it's bad, especially when uh, a player that relies on his speed and his and his ability to cut on a dime. So it's right. and. So therefore, somebody like uh, IQ, this is a, this is an opportunity that IQ can be that guy to, to come out of nowhere. I mean, well, we know what we got, but to actually shine, right, right. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. We'll, what would that look like? I, I don't. I don't. I don't see IQ being a good point guard. Like he's he he can play point guard, and he showed in summer league or whatever that he could, you know, facilitate, set the table, kind of. But yeah, he's he got to worry about his shot. Seven assists in summer league, though, bro. Yeah, but he's got to worry about his shot, though. Like, yeah, I've. I mean, I know quick. We all know quick is a shooter, but like, we got to make sure. 
that he's knocking it down. He can't he can't start off slow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think quickly maybe in for what they call a sophomore slump, right? And and, and yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and it's and it's not because not because um um the sophomore year is tougher, but because he's been asked and been given more responsibility, right? So so not that the league will catch up to IQ, but that he is learning more stuff. With that said, with that said, um the third year of IQ should be impressive because it because if he takes the second year to put it all together when we get to that third year of iq i think you'll see a much improved much improved player so shout out shout out to Chuck i think i think he'll i don't know if he'll necessarily score like more like i still think he's gonna average probably around the same just we got because we got more people and his minutes are probably going to be around the same too, okay. but his efficiency can get better. That, that's the thing with it. So that that's definitely going to be a, a thing about it. But like with the rookies, I don't. I'm not really in tune with the rookies right now. I don't think anyone's going to really like show off unless someone gets injured. That's the only way I could see something happening. Okay. Okay. All right. But Sims Sims might play just because. Right now, Noel was injured. Yeah. So it, it really depends. Oh, man. Wow. And I think it's going to take Mitch 10 to 15 games to get into game shape. But like, I think he's still going to play starter minutes because he's he's like the best available right now. But it's going to take him 10 to 15 to lose that, lose some weight and get into game shape. Okay. Okay. Do, right. you, think, do you think that quickly – Will make it to his third year as a Nick. Yeah. 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 I, I I do. I do. I definitely. I definitely do. All right. I, I, I know he looks more appealing because of it. If anybody start thinking trade, his name comes up a lot. But then you got to figure out who, who and what are we trading for. You know, in that in that scenario, because. He's going to get, if he's, I mean, he's going to stay and I can see him signing, dude. I don't, I don't, I just can't see us letting him go. Right. And if, you, and if you're going to trade him, you got to trade him for a no brainer. It's got to be, it, it's got to be something that you just can't beat with a stick, man. Right. And I also believe that um, quickly is Tom Thibodeau's heartstring. Yeah. You know what that's, I'm saying? That's his son. That's yeah. the son he never had. Yeah. I, I think, I think there is a, when I heard Derek Rolls, allude to it. Derek Rose was like, Derek Rose said something to the effect that Tom Thibodeau is crazy, but it don't affect quickly because quickly is crazy like Tibbs and Tibbs loves it. Like he jump all over quick about a certain thing. Like, is that me? Is that me? What? Sure. No, that, 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 that's Brooklyn. Anybody here from Brooklyn? Yes. Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah, that was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounded like Brooklyn right there. Okay. So, but, um, um, so Derek Roll said, um, in an MSG interview, um, that Tibbs jumps all over everybody, but people don't take it personal, but quickly loves it. And, and that Tibbs loves the fact that quickly loves it. And they get along because both of them are crazy. And when you look at quickly, you would never put that type of, um, at least I, I I never did. I never looked at quickly as that. I thought he was more reserved. I never looked at him as a guy that would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tibbs and Tibbs like it. You know what I'm saying? So so in a weird, yeah. in, in a weird, in a weird way. I see I see quickly being here as long as Tibbs is here. And if Tibbs makes his way somewhere else, like another coaching spot after this, I could see him looking to come get quickly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest though. Like I know like the way that Mo asked that question and like people are saying that they think he's gonna get traded. If if there is like a trade that we do, I do see him being like the first one out. Just because we don't want to give up RJ and we're not giving up Randall. 
So I think he would probably be the most likely that that other people would want over mm-hmm. everyone else. Oh, uh, you mean you, you're talking about because of his value, his NBA value? Yeah, because I think people know that we don't <laughs> want to trade RJ. Like I think that's probably what we wanted. We want to pay him this year, and then we got Randall locked in already. So I would think that he's the best available thing to trade, and then maybe like a Fournier and like a Noel if they're really thinking about and the, the deal. And, a, and an Obi, you got to put Obi in. And if you're talking about quick, you're probably gonna put Obi in the conversation also. Yeah, probably too. But I think they would want um, quick more. And also because we got Rokas coming in next year, probably like. We, I think we're getting ready for something in that in that guard position. Like one of those guys is going to be phased out. Like now, maybe who are, ta- who are you talking about getting, bro? Uh, I, I'm not. You opened the door, and now the door. Hey, Mo, is I'm open. just saying, like guys that might be phased out. <laughs> so are you so? I mean, there's I, a bevy of guys. Like I got my favorites. So 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 I think. Like, so are you asking? Ron from Still Knicks fans, if quickly would be included in a Damian Lillard trade. No, nah, I don't. Nah, I don't there's no it, way we're getting that deal. Because no, no. listen, it's that's too the deal early. I would it's, really wouldn't want anyway. It's too early, man. It's too early to be talking about trades. No, it, I'm just saying. I'm just saying because you was talking about you was talking about quickly and and what he means to to the team. I was just thinking about it. It's like okay. Doesn't this team want to trade? Doesn't this team want to get better through trades? Uh, well, the years? thing the thing is, is trades the way the front office works. Trades is the last thing that our front office they they put out there that they look at. They're looking at other means, and I wouldn't see like I said again. I wasn't. I mean, you know, if you put it like that, then you know, I see us signing uh, quick, quick being with us, um, and I'm pretty sure that other organizations are calling trying to get you know see what's up with this player, and they're looking at quick. You know, I'm pretty sure that that's what they would do. But um, trading right now, eh, I wouldn't see it because it, it would right. have to be something to like move. I mean, break the needle, not move the needle to get rid of IQ because IQ is a part of our rotation. He's a he's a part of Absolutely. he's part of this future. What, what, what we have. So I, I just I couldn't see it. Um, RJ, no, no, it ain't going to happen. Uh, you still a better chance of running through uh, fire and gasoline draws. But, but, um, but like, would we would we be heartbroken if quickly left the team for somebody who's an all star or no? You know, just like, like I don't think we'd be heartbroken. That's that, that's why he's the guy. So, I, you know, this year, I want the most out of him. I don't I don't see him like Freezy said. A sophomore slump is a real thing. Yeah, you know? I, I see. I see a sophomore slump. I can see him having a sophomore slump. Main and the main reason is because of now you put more emphasis on him to pick up the uh point guard duties because right. scoring comes so natural. This cat rolls out the bed before his feet hit the floor, he didn't hit he didn't hit six already on you know what I mean, right? So, the it's, it's going to be a transition, the transition is going to be bigger for him than it was than it would be for RJ because you know, RJ was playing okay, well, that's not a good comparison because RJ had. Uh, idiot that was switching up his shot and had him in bad position. So just yeah. scratch that. You know, belay my last on that. Um, but uh, far as with with IQ, you you're moving him into more of a point guard position to run more point because you got to take an account. Like I said, Kimba and D Rose, the injury history. You know, that's going to be a um, that's a, a a factor in itself. And I can see him hitting a sophomore slump because he's looking at. He's caught between do I distribute here, do I dish it off this way, or do I take my shot? Do I take the shot now, or do I pass it to him? So it's kind of like he's constantly thinking. It's not natural to him yet. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, well, party people, I got to get out of here, man. I got to wrap up, Um, you know, a bunch of stuff that I got to do. I'm, I'm thinking about jumping back on. Hey, dude, what time What time is the um, Hadouken Sharon No Life Pod showing today? Duke. Hadouken. All right, so Hadouken Sharon's No Life Pod should be on today between 4 and 4.30. Um, a few of us are going to jump on. Oh, Here yeah, my bad. I'm back. It's, it's going to be like at 4 or 4.30. Okay. Like yeah, so so we're going to try to jump on and support Duke. Come on and and, and talk some talk some, some Knicks 
um, noise and some and show some love for Duke. Um, you guys, anybody got anything to say before we? we um, anybody got a party shot before we get out of here? is talking in the in the chat. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> he said you're his son. You know, yeah, I love to see that. You love to see that right? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Man. Yeah, man. So I think I think what he's he saying, I think what what he with Mo, what Mo, I think what he's saying is um, that he allowed you to leave his um, pants pocket for a little while. You know, what I'm saying, but but enjoy the sunshine because he's gonna try to put you back in there. I mean, he was no, he's never put me anywhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh just wanted to say thanks as always for having me on, Uncle Freezy. Appreciate no, no. y'all. No, Shout you out to the me. panel: Hadouken, Mo, Soul Finger, Danny Landis. Thanks. Appreciate y'all. Gi. Uh, yep. Gi. Oh, oh where'd he go? Cousin. Yeah. Gi. Yeah, Nick G. Oh man. Uh, and a G man. Appreciate all y'all. I'm definitely gonna keep trying to tune in whenever I can. There's so much going on. There's so much programming. Yeah. Um, and you know, we trying to, we trying to do a lot more over here on the still Nick fan side. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, definitely look hey, out did, for did, but you, you gotta make sure we, I think I, I, I said this before. I don't know if, if, if we were clear though, when you come through, man, you gotta make sure you put the link to your channel in the chat. So why, oh, why I, did. You... I did, I put it okay. in the, um, I put it in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. Okay. All right. So, so that way, and we'll talk it up that way people can go and subscribe when you put it in there. And then that way you can get subscribers along and along and people can support the channel. There, there you go again, right, right up in there. <laughs> Bam. Bam. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah, definitely tune in tonight. Still Nick fans at 930. We're going to be chopping up, talking about our season prediction uh, with uh, Josh, from, you know, Josh, a.k.a. Uncle Fulio from MBK. So and the controversy show. So definitely check that out. OK, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Okay. And whoever is watching on the replay. Definitely got to smash that like button to get to 100. We six away. Yeah. And make sure to subscribe and comment on the replay as well. Yeah, for we sure. Definitely are good to do too because we read it after. Hey, it, 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 one, it easy. one thing I just want to throw out there is, hey, everybody, we all, the end of the day, we all want a championship. However, comma, you know, let's, let's, let's temper how we come at one another because earlier, I just want to bring this earlier in the show, we got a little, Got a little heat. He got a little thawed off on some things, and and because the other people didn't ag agree with certain takes, but you know, step back and listen to what people are saying. and don't get in defensive position because you're not in a uh, you know nobody challenging your intelligence like that. But just think about what you're saying, how you say it. Listen to what other people are saying because a lot of a lot of these cats coming on here putting out some real good facts. Because I sit back and I listen and I'm like, you know what? I don't know what I was thinking about. Right. I'm actually talking out the side of my neck when I was in the way I was thinking. So right. you know, they don't have an ego about it. Nobody bigger than hey, this this is this is this is Knicks Nation. At the end of the day, Freezy Brown is the man that's dry a hey, this 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 rolling this caravan. So you know, step back and listen to what they are because everybody's been putting out some good facts. Right. But you know, I, that's all I got to say. I, I'll just leave it at I'll leave it at that. You know, but it's right. you know as usual as always, good show. Hey, uh, congrats on your show there, uh, Duke. Uh, good, it. good take. And um, and again, run. You don't leave nobody with. You don't leave any meat on the bone for nobody to work with. Yeah, so yeah. You gotta throw that soup bone in that water and just make it and just let it just boil it from there. Mo, hey, good seeing you again, bro. Been yeah. a minute. And shout out to Danny Landis. Danny Landis. <laughs> the camera been like that the whole time. I was confused yeah. who it was before. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, so so thank you everybody for coming through. Um, um, every man, we had a lot of good points, man. This dude Ron from from Still Knicks fans, he is what you call poignant. You know what I'm saying? Like like and contrite. So <laughs> he says like puts a lot of information in a few words, and it's easy to understand. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate so, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna link it because you can't link it because only um, yeah. moderators are allowed to link it. Oh, like, I was they only see it. Know yeah, so oh, I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it for you in there. Okay. So that, okay. that's that's the link right there. I saw it too. I didn't see. It. All right, I got appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Okay. Right, yeah, I didn't I didn't know what was what was going on because I'm looking at Streamyard right now and I'm not looking at YouTube. My bad, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. My bad. I, I ain't wanna. 
I have Anytime. to come teach soon. I'll see you, yo, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, so everybody, I'm out of here. Um, uh, God bless. Thank you for coming out. Good afternoon. Peace. Yeah, peace out. Peace.